Hello friends, welcome back to the Day Maybe Project. Uh, this episode is with Jansen Noel. Uh, Jansen and I had just met a couple minutes before we started this podcast. Uh, we've been kind of going back and forth on social media for a couple months now, trying to get this podcast down. Um, but yeah, he was he's an interesting guy. I think we had a lot in common and we kind of knew that going in. So uh, we had a lot to talk about, a lot to catch up on and, and swap stories and Jansen's a really interesting guy. He, he, he's been a lot of places and lived in a lot of different areas and continues to seek out that, uh, that wanderlust, that travel mentality. And he does that through photography. Uh, he's an excellent portrait photographer. And uh, it sounds like he gets to work a lot with his university, uh, the ULM. And um, yeah, he's just, he, we have a lot of common interest. And so we, we just talked about what we have in common, running and hunting and uh, creativity, photography, videography, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, really enjoyed this one and look forward to hanging out with Jansen in the future. I really hope that we can collaborate on a project uh, of some sort in the future. Um, yeah, if you're just joining this podcast, I recently quit my job, sold my house, and fully committed to living on the road and pursuing my dreams of podcasting and videography. Um, the easiest way to support me is to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, it's one click, it's free, and it only helps me. Uh, if you would, you know, if you like this podcast, you know, feel free to give it a like, share it with your friends, share it on Facebook, Instagram, all the social medias. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you want to follow me, uh, I'm on Instagram at dan.mabry. If you want to follow Jansen, I'll leave his stuff right here. And yeah, enjoy the podcast. Feel free to reach out to me if you have uh, any suggestions on who should be on the podcast. And I'd love to try to meet those people. Got more of these coming out. Uh, hopefully I can do a lot in the next couple weeks and try to crank out more than one a week. But see what happens. Thanks guys, peace. All right, I forgot to say shout out to Governor Cigar Bar. That's where we did this podcast. Um, and yeah, they got a cool space there. They got a cool thing going on there. Jansen's actually the youngest member there, apparently. But uh, I know Friday Ellis owns that, and he's got his own podcast, and uh, he's got some more pretty cool things in the works. So y'all look him up. Um, I'll be supporting him in the months to come and hopefully I can link up with him at some point. So yeah, just needed to add that in there. Enjoy. Jansen. All right, Jansen Noel. Noel, you got it. There right. you go. Well, it's it is spelled a little differently. Yeah, and it's up for speculation. Yeah, we fair were, enough. We were raised Jansen Nowell. You know the, the heritage yeah. of your name. It was Nowell back. We came across Ellis Island. We changed. I think shortened it. They said it was too long, so okay. we did that. And then, uh, but I mean, I I when I went to college, kind of went with the Noel. Yeah. My father had always on his voicemail. This is James Noel, you know, and, but everybody else called us Nowell. So. Yeah. It's been a kind of, a, it's a cool separation though. Cause you like, how do you know me? You know, like, For do you sure. know me from like my family? If they say Jansen now, I'm like, I'm in West Monroe, you know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so I came across Jansen because he's a photographer and, yeah. uh, I'll be straight up with you. Like, uh, do you know Steven Pulowski? Yeah. So like, great photographer. whenever I initially saw your photography, I just saw like portraits and mm -hmm. models and stuff like that. And it reminded me very much of his style. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I kind of like, obviously I didn't know you, like we, we barely know each other now, mm -hmm. but uh, I just kind of, I didn't know what to think about you, you know? And, uh, and then I see the more that you post, the more we have in common. <laughs> and it's like, all yeah, right, dude. I really need to talk to this dude. Yeah. Um, so at some point, I guess let's, let's start with photography. When did you pick up a camera? 
I think I was nine when I, my mom had a little digital camera. I was just messing around with nature and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, obviously, nobody wants to buy a picture of a squirrel. So, <laughs> you know, so I, I just kind of messed around with that for a little bit. And then I knew I knew that was what I wanted to do. Um, take portraits and work with people and um, just save my money working for my grandma. Yeah. Bought a camera. It was like 300 bucks or something. Okay. Kind of built a business off of that. Um, started shooting really more professional stuff. I mean, really like getting paid for it when yeah. I was 14. Okay. Uh, did a wedding then. A wow. couple hundred bucks. I probably wouldn't have hired myself in that situation. Right. But I mean, I did the job and, and they were happy with it. And, uh, you know, from there it kind of s- snowballs. Okay. Yeah. With referrals and yeah. being around here and just good customer service and uh, a lot of good clients. Um, I do shoot a lot of portraits. You you mentioned Steven. He shoots a lot of seniors. I, I do a lot of seniors as well. It's kind of specialty. Um, but mm-hmm. I pick up 10 or 12 weddings a year and, um, you know, but I would definitely say I'm a portrait photographer more than anything. And I like, I prefer shooting just individuals, artists, I mean, anybody who's got a talent or something interesting, kind of similar to you and bringing on people on your podcast and, and making the, bringing the best out of others, you know, yeah. that's, we have a very similar job. Our job is to make others look good and feel good. And yeah, and, I mean, uh, I was, I was about to ask you like what your motivation yeah. behind that is, but you just kind of answered it. Like, I guess it is yeah. that like, we're going to be friends after this because <laughs> like we, you know, we just had this, this hour long, whatever, you know, it's like, just like a bonding yeah. experience type of deal, I guess, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I haven't met Dan, but I, like I said, I gave him a hug. I said, I feel like I know you, man. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> I feel sure. like I already know you. you know, I leave I leave your stuff on when I'm doing homework or whatever and just kind of in the background. I'm yeah, like, thank you, it's, man. It's, yeah, it's good. Good stuff. I, I like that you're, that you're pursuing that. And I, I stopped asking people what they do for work and started asking people what they're passionate about. You know what I mean? And it yeah. seems like that's what you're doing. It's, it seems like that's what I've what I've heard from some of your podcasts. You you had some other jobs and you're, you said you're miserable at it or whatever. Yeah, Tell yeah. me about that. I want to know. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just unhappy doing what I was doing. So I was working for my dad doing road construction yeah. and I pretty much done that almost every summer of my whole life. There was a couple of summers that I didn't do that. And then college, getting out of college and mm-hmm. doing a couple of jobs there. But I, uh, yeah, just, I realized the situation that I was in and, uh, being very unique situation and people our age, I don't have any debt mm-hmm. and uh i have a little bit of a financial buffer and i i, I had a passion um so you may have heard i moved to denver colorado and, yeah and lived there for like six months and lost my job and basically got depressed and had yeah, an opportunity back that. home and, and and came home and uh looking back on that time i i did not have a passion i did not have a reason to live so to say mm. uh, i had never thought mm. about suicide or anything like that yeah. but you know i just I didn't have anything that got my blood going, got my got me excited. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I came home, I, I did pick up a camera, but that was still slow. You know, I, I, I'm a big believer in the you know everything happens for a reason. You're in the you're in this place for a reason at, at the specific time kind of deal, you know. And um, I had to go through those trials to get to where I am, and there will be trials ahead. So yeah, uh, but I, yeah, I I do. I've now quit my job and. Uh, sold my home that that's awesome, I had man. bought. <laughs> that's good, right? And uh, yeah, I've never, you know, you always hear about people like having panic attacks. And I don't know if you have any experience with that, but I never thought that I'd ever had a panic attack. But you sell your house and all your belongings, and that'll overwhelm you for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a bit of an experience. I was a bit overwhelmed, but you know, I I got to I called one of my friends and and talked it out, and he was like, "Look, dude, this was." You've been talking about doing this. This is what you want to do. Like, mm-hmm. it's the right decision. So just, it, yeah, it's overwhelming right now, but give it a give it a day or two, and things will mellow out. And uh, it's been a couple weeks now. Uh, I am definitely felt lost as I'll <laughs> get out at times. Um, but I, I'm busy now. I have I have picked up a couple of video jobs here in North Louisiana, and nice. I've been finishing up those and. Uh, been pursuing the podcast it, it i, I kind of didn't kind of didn't like the first two weeks that i was homeless and jobless i was waiting on these jobs that i had coming mm-hmm. up and um yeah now i'm like super passionate about the podcast again and i released michael davis's podcast and today it's the most viewed one that i've had so oh, far awesome, dude. so don't you um, love it when you're 
keep on going and yeah. you, get them, you get more likes more views you know it's encouraging for sure um it's definitely progression cool to see it growing and, and you know last night i was at sundown and i had a guy walk up to me and was like hey are you dan mabry <laughs> like, I was like, hey. yeah, I am. Shake your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was like, he ended up messaging me later and he wants to come on the podcast. And Sweet. He has some interesting things to talk about. So I hope to get him on later this week. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, back to you. Uh, oh, it's going to go back and forth. No, it's going to be cool. like a game of tennis, man. That's cool. I'm down with that. I'm interested in knowing about you, you know. For sure. I'm yeah. with that. Um, all right. So you were a collegiate athlete at some point. Yep. In cross country. And track, yeah, and did track. three years. Yeah, long distance guy. Mm-hmm. Still Mid pursue distance, that. Yep. Yeah, so I just stopped my senior year. Uh, went through a lot of coaches. Um, went through a lot of players quitting, and I stayed on about as long as I could. Really, this um, is all at ULM. At ULM, yeah, I ran for West Washtenaw out there um, three years as well. I didn't run my freshman year. I played football and stuff like that. Okay. And I was a free safety, and they were like, "You're fast, man. You need to be on a track team." And I, and I just, I really enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't something I was like diehard fan of. Right. Uh, you know, those guys would get on the line. They talk about different famous athletes and stuff like that. They follow the sport more than I did. Yeah. Um, but I but I did like it from overall health and um, just being able to challenge yourself and say, hey, I'm not going to stop. You know, I'm going to go six more miles and, and any of the, all that's mentally, you know, strengthening. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. So, so I, I did that three years in college. Um, and, and I think I think the reason I didn't pursue it my senior years uh, i just was ready to move on to career stuff you know really focus and dive into photography while i'm here and take the mo- most out of it i can get you know and sometimes just putting away i have like a season of just quitting things you know i was involved in student government quit that you know and, and just just little small things that kind of add up where it's like you got a meeting to go here you got a meeting to do this you know i just started taking two weeks off two weeks on to some of the things i was really interested in and i did and um it was like those two weeks off i'm like wow i can really I'm seeing progression. I'm seeing, you know, me grow in photography and in my business. And, uh, it was time, you know, when, uh, when other things start costing you money too, it's, you know, it's time to kind of yeah. move on. Uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I did. I really enjoyed the years that I was there. Um, a lot of the commodity of the guys, you know, being, being together and waking up early, especially like, um, uh, in cross country, we'd get up early at six in the morning and run. For sure. That was much better for me than, than, uh, in the spring with track, they'd, they'd work out at 3.30 in the afternoon. They kind of want everybody to be together, mm-hmm. which I understood that, you know, having all the track guys, the field guys, the cross-country guys with the field guys and all that. But uh, for me, 6 a.m. was where it's at, you know. I, and I haven't really seen a lot of 6 a.m. since then. I've been sleep, <laughs> sleep in, you know, get up about 7.45 if I got an 8 o'clock class, you know. Yeah, yeah so fair. I don't get up too early anymore. But, you know, when, when you're doing that, when your body's trained for that, it, it, it's refreshing to get up and, hey, spend a little bit of time with yourself afterwards reading or whatever you're doing, you know? No doubt. Yeah. I, I kind of got used to waking up early doing the job that I was doing. Um, but I, I've kind of fallen out of that sometime now, but you know, it's definitely a proven, uh, formula for success, I guess. If, yeah. if you get up early and, and attack the day. So yeah, all those Navy say. seals, you gotta get before 30. You know? For sure. For sure. Uh, and I mean, that, that's, that's one way to go through life, I guess. I think yeah. it's it's definitely productive, you know. I think there'd definitely be days for me like that, but uh I'm sure you don't you're not afraid to do those days on days you're traveling and, and No, and yeah, you got to get up early. Like yeah, when you're traveling, that's the best part. Yeah. Um some ta- some days, you know, like doing just getting out and having breakfast somewhere else is kind of enough to push you out instead mm-hmm. of staying in like a cabin and waking up making a big breakfast till like staying there till like 12 o'clock and then yeah. you know, I'd rather eat out at places when I'm traveling and then, For uh, sure. Uh, that that definitely is um a way you can get up early i mean a lot of the best animal sightings you see are early in the morning you know saw a couple bull moose one time when i was in colorado that were bathing in a in a pond and one guy's like yeah this is like the second moose sighting of the week you know he's like so i was like ah it's pretty good you know it's friday (laughs) it's about about time to see some moose you know (laughs) that's awesome So you mentioned mid distance. Was that like mile eight hundred? What are, like what? Yeah, what so were you going for there? yeah, eight hundred, and then they did a fifteen hundred in college. So it's not quite a sixteen hundred like it was in in high school. Okay. Um, I ran all the way up to to five k's and eight k's yeah. and, and um, stuff like that for conference um, when it comes to cross country, but um, I was probably I was at one fifty five was my race weight and. Um, that was a little bit bigger than most of the guys that were really good. You know, they mm-hmm. were in the 130s, 140s low. For sure. But um, I was able to use that kind of weight that I had um, 
to push me through a half mile, you know, so I was a decent half miler. I was number two in the state in 4A when I was in high school and uh, going to college, they, they pushed me into the mile a little bit more, but I, but I enjoyed that too. I was able to do that, but really everything past that, I felt like, you know, somebody else's game more than mine, but you know, got to do it all if you're going to be an athlete and especially yeah. at a division one school that's even smaller than most division one schools. They want you to be out there and they're not, uh, a lot of these guys, they want, spend the most money on these guys that can be versatile you know so it makes sense for sure speed so, guys get a lot too you know they they do well definitely yeah they run a f- few races and then they quit you know two or three yeah but so more points you know what's your fastest mile fastest mile college 1500 was like 405 never got it under four that's I crazy think, to yeah me, dude. that's awesome i mean of course up until i mean i'm not sure the exact date but the guys ran under four you know, they didn't think that was possible. Right. And now guys are doing it like all the time. Yeah. But uh, 405, that was decent for me, you know. <laughs> That's booking it, brother. Yeah, I was like 435, 430s in high school. So they were able to bring Man. me down a lot with a lot of the mileage. It was a different t- style of training. Um, it was more time on your feet. I feel like, you know, we go out and we run 60 minutes at least, but, you know, more, mostly around 70, 80 minutes a day. You know, was um, that just like was that like sprint work or like? Oh no, no, just like um, distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go out and run 15 miles sometimes on a long day. You know, and that was the things that is I was. Is that like paced or is that just go? Yeah, you try to keep a consistent pace. Right. Um, you know, not too crazy wearing you out, but right. definitely enough to feel it. Um, and I, I just didn't really do a lot of long runs. So sub, sub nine minute miles. Like, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. in sevens, sixes. Yeah, for yeah. 15 miles. Yeah, um, a lot of guys do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'd probably, I, mean, yeah, I was probably, yes, high sixes, sevens yeah. for 15. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. I mean, it's not like comparable to these guys that run marathons. They can, right. phew, they can go four, four minutes and something for a marathon, 26. Miles. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's where I'm leading this conversation is like, do you have any yeah. desire to like run marathons? Oh, Ironmans and stuff like, like that. that. My buddies are always hitting me up. They're like, hey, before you lose it, man, let's, let's train, you know, let's yeah. get our bikes going and, uh, but that would be more socially. I feel like I'd do it to hang out with them and have some, some sort of right. something I'm looking forward to in yeah. training uh, physically. I mean, it's, it's definitely, uh, it definitely helps, you know, you don't want to lose it when you, you see a lot of guys gain a lot of weight when they quit, you know, for sure. And I'm like, I'm already 172. I weighed in the other day and I was like, you know, I'm, I can, I can feel it a little bit, you know, I'm kind of feeling out, you know, but <laughs> sure. it's not, it's not bad. I mean, a healthy weight, I could go all the way up to 190 and I'm still healthy. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? No that, I, uh, my buddy Jesse Butler, who I had on here not too long ago. Yeah, I saw that. He just fought at 145, so he had to cut down to 145, and I was like, man, that just inspires me to like operate at 145, which is Ooh. like cutting all the carbs. What's he doing? Yeah, you know, oh yeah, he's well, he's like they, slowly cutting weight weight as the fight mm-hmm. date gets gets closer to it. But a lot of the end weight is just water. Yeah. Sweating it out, getting in the sauna yeah. and sweating it out. Man, I like to eat, man. We just had Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> a couple plates of that, you know what I mean? For sure. Eat on that for a few days. Where Did you go anywhere for Thanksgiving? Or? Uh, no. Uh, my whole, Most of my family lives in Ruston, and so okay. we were all over there. Yeah. Um, I have a brother that lives in Houston, but he came up. So. My folks are all spread out. My mom had seven kids, and everybody's in a different state, it seems like. Wow. But, but uh, we had gone to Ohio. My, one of my brothers uh, just had a baby with his wife and um, newborn, you know, so we didn't want to make them travel too far. We For all kind of sure. met in Ohio. I've never been to Ohio. It was a 14 hours drive. We did it in one run. So yeah. on the way there, on the way back, I got back about three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Did some hunting while I was there. It was okay. pretty fun. I had some opportunities at a buck and just um, kind of got snorted out. They smelled me, you know, a couple yeah. times. But yeah. but bow hunting, that's mostly what they do up there. They do bows and shotguns. So uh, you mentioned hunting. How long have you yeah. been hunting? Well, past couple of years, really picked it back up. Okay. You know, I killed some deers when, deer when I was younger. Yeah. But uh, my dad's always had that trade. It's been in his, in his family, too. My Both my grandfathers were really good hunters. One of my grandfathers had, like, 26 patents, uh and bow archery equipment and stuff wow. like that. So they kind of brought our family out to California. Yeah, okay. he invented the pendulum swinging site where you you move the bow down and the pendulum will swing with yeah. it and kind of line up. So um, he had all kinds of stuff like that, cutting edge stuff and um, Cabela's and all that. And I never really got to hang out with the guy, meet him. He, he died in 2005. Um, but he was a lot like me in a lot of different ways is what I hear. 
So, you know, my, my parents are always telling me that, yeah, it would have been great if your Papa Huey would have been there, you know, yeah. to meet you, you know. We both were blind in our right eye. Okay. Yeah, strangely enough. Um, so all of his left-handed bows got passed down to me. Okay. Um, so you're so, blind in your right eye? Yes, can't see out of that. Um, Completely. Yeah, you know, people don't get that. When you say you're blind in one eye, they say, cover your other eye. How many, how many fingers am I holding up? Like, what do you not understand about being blind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I, I ask because you obviously can be yeah. partially blind as well, but... Yeah, I guess you can, yeah, I mean, but no, I'm blind. Uh, my retina is completely detached. That was, uh, it was a parasite I, I got from a dog when I was four years old. Holy crap. And uh, they think it was like a stray dog in the neighborhood or something, you know, not been taken care of, not been wormed or whatever. Wow. So, and you don't really think about that. Um, you can get it from cats, too. I think it's like 7,000 people per year contracted a parasite. Wow. And... Um, if it's an adult, usually they can say, hey, like, I'm, I know I'm going blind, and uh, they get it treated with antiparasitical medicine, and, um, or it will go to your stomach, and they'll get sick, and they'll get treated as well. But um, for me, I'm four. You know, I remember, like, the doctors were hol holding up bags of candy, and I'd look out this way and, and see it, and they're like, yeah, he's, he's being blinded from the inside out. Um, so my mom, you know, that devastated her. She took me to a lot of uh, good doctors across the United States, but... It seemed like the best option to not try to stop it. Yeah. Um, so I don't have any strain or whatever. But um, the coloration of my eye is is white in my pupil. And I think yeah, that's just... Yeah, I mean, just, like you said that. And yeah. And obviously I look at your eye. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, it is different. Like Some I, scar I tissue. never noticed that beforehand, though, unless you said something. Yeah. It's it's funny. My mom always said, she's like, you should make your, your uh, slogan, uh, you have an eye for photography. <laughs> Not going to do that ever, Fair but enough. it's funny, man. It, yeah. we, we joke with, it's a joke of the family. You know, they you just come up behind me and while I'm watching TV, touch my, my, my brothers and sisters would see, yeah, how close they can get to me, you know, but I can hear when it's yeah, bouncing yeah. off. My ears are good. You know, it's just my eye, but I can, I have pretty good vision in this one. So, yeah. so I mean, you're like yeah. obviously very used to it at this point. If it yeah, dude, really I could not hit life. a baseball to save my life. Yeah. Um, play ball, even so right-handed or left-handed. Um, right-handed. Okay. Yeah. Um, but just shoot left-handed. I was about to um, say. Yeah, to line up scopes and yeah. stuff like that. Um, no depth perception, which is a real thing. I mean, if you ever close one of your eyes and try to back up your car, it's a lot different. I mean, I've certainly learned ways to cope with it. Um, but uh, couldn't hit a baseball, like I said. Yeah. Uh, I was all-time bunner. So I, okay. I, I, man, I'd give you the best practice swings, and I, and you look, I would look down. like I'm about to hit a home freaking run, man. But no, that's where that's where I learned to run. Just just how fast can I get to first base? For sure, know? for sure. Yeah, I was kind of the same guy there in that sense. I couldn't hit the ball to save my life. And so you were into baseball and all that? I, yeah, yep. I was into baseball for, man, I guess like t-ball through third or fourth grade. Uh, right when you started to get to live pitch, like those first couple years mm. of live pitch. And I was still trying to find my place on the field, like I – I wanted to be Chipper Jones. Like you know, everybody has a <laughs> yeah. idol that they look up to. I wanted to be Chipper Jones. I wanted to play third base. Coach wouldn't let me play third base. I played catcher, and I loved catcher. And I played catcher for like two games in a row. Then I never played catcher again. Mm. And I was like, "Screw this! I'm going to play soccer." <laughs> so that's what I did. I played soccer okay. for like I ten years. Played a couple years in high school playing soccer, but uh, just for speed work and stuff like that. Yeah. I mostly played left out in baseball. You know, they okay. put me on the bench. You know? Okay, fair <laughs> yeah, enough. Yeah, you know what I mean. Fair enough. Fair enough. That was a position I played, but I mean, I understood why. I mean, I, I was not able to hit. You know, I can only see out of one yeah. eye. Yeah, I can only see out of one eye. My dad, he put me in. Uh, we were in North Carolina. He put us in the Jackie Robinson Baseball League, and we were like the only two white guys, my brother and I, in the entire okay. league. Okay. And I mean, looking back on it, you know, I could see why he did that. He's like, I don't want my kids to be. He he always my dad. With baseball, he kind of got daddy balled when he was growing up. Somebody, would, I met somebody the other day. They were telling me about that. They're like, "Yeah, one coach messed your dad up. He was a great baseball player, but one coach made him hate baseball." Yeah. And so when we wanted to play baseball, he said, "You all guys are gonna play the Jackie Robinson Baseball League," you know. And they gave us nicknames and stuff. And we hung out with all these folks and went to some some really good barbecues. Man, we had a good time. It was fun, that's but awesome. but didn't play a lick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fair enough, you know. Yeah. So you're in North Carolina. Yeah, we were in North Carolina. Um, that's when I lost my vision. When I was four. We had gone back there. Um, we moved. I think I moved seven or eight different times. Me personally, my my folks like eighteen or nineteen times. They wow. they moved with the military. Dad's still active duty, okay. so they just got stationed up in Denver. Um, they got a house there. They keep telling me, "Hey, come over here." You know, guys, come skiing. Yeah. So I might be uh, taking them up on that offer. You know, for sure. But what uh, branch of the military is he in? Well, he was in the army when he was in the college, navy for like twenty something years. 
did a whole career in the Navy, and now he's um, in public health services. A lot of people don't even know it's a branch, but he's basically an ICE officer. So he's, he he um, is a nurse at a prison. Okay. Uh, he was a nurse at the prison here um, in okay. Gina. Yeah. And, uh, that's kind of what he does. He doesn't really talk about his work a whole lot. I mean, he served some tours in mm-hmm. Iraq, and um, you know, I'm, he's just not getting to that stage where he's talking about that stuff now. You know, right, right. And um, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I remember certainly when he came back, he was a different guy. You know, like with in 2006 you know we'd be like we'd be cutting up in the back of the car and he's like you guys shut up back there you know i mean like this i'm like my you know i don't remember him being like that when he left you know yeah 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 but uh that was that was a challenging time i remember just thinking like small stuff just like hey am i ever gonna throw football with my dad again you know because he's out there remember we had like different church services and they'd be praying for my dad when i was younger because they they had got shot at and and a helicopter he was a flight nurse and flying around in blackhawks he said he said he never knew a Black Hawk could go upside down. They took that helicopter out, upside down. They had tracer rounds shooting at him and stuff. Wow. And that, really, that's where I like had my love for photography kind of develop. Um, there was a photographer, a war photographer, a great war photographer for Time Magazine, Yuri Kozarev. And he's up in New York, but he's, all, he's still doing war photos and stuff. Um, he had smoked cigars with my dad um, in the mornings. And my dad kind of took a liking. And he photographed him a lot and, and some of the magazines that public published images of my dad you know different things him translating to people or holding like different body parts that are detached from people you know there's just some cool i was like seeing this stuff come across you know like it gives you an insight because he kept things pretty private at work you know um that was one thing like i said he 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 goes to work does his job comes home never complained about it you know and that's really i'm like wow you know i'm I'm really appreciative of him working so hard for our whole family because like i said we have seven brothers and sisters six other ones other than me wow that's a lot of mouths to feed man yeah no doubt that's uh, yeah that's 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 wild we all ended up pretty independent you know we don't we're not like a super close close close-knit family i mean we just started our first actually having everybody together for thanksgiving in ohio that was our first year doing that and we're debating whether we're gonna do that every year or every couple years but um I think that's just the nature of it, man. When you have that many kids, it's kind of like fighting for food in the pantry sometimes, you know, who left the, who's got the last pop tart, you know? This yeah, is, for sure. Yeah. So are you the only one that's left here? So I got a sister, um, two sisters. Yeah. They both have children. So they're here kind of locked down with significant others and yeah. stuff like that. And they're raising their kids. Um, I don't know if they can totally leave the state necessarily, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, my brother left to Tennessee to do music and pursue that. And I got, brother in texas he does mortgage lending and things like that some family out in california where we had kind of originated um spent most of my life in california up until this point um so they kind of they kind of stayed there yeah southern california so when did you go to west washita well i mean i I came here from north carolina to california north carolina california we lived in san diego carlsbad area we lived in anaheim grew up going to the angels baseball games season ticket holders and all that man it was get up at, at nighttime you get on top of your roof and see the fireworks from disneyland it was it was a different type of living yeah yeah a lot of traffic you know it's the things i don't like about it now i look forward to being here you know in some ways so did your dad like end up at barksdale or something or how did y'all uh, end up here yeah he's stationed out in barksdale when he was in the reserves for a little bit and he's back active now um he was in camp pendleton when we were in southern california yeah you know so we kind of we could see the beach from our house man it was nice yeah you just walk to school or whatever you know actually they what was funny is the elementary school there they uh didn't take buses like so i mean most people got dropped off or whatever but they had a limousine service so i guess if you were part of some group of kids that needed to get picked up at the bus they thought it was cheaper to pick up kids in limos <laughs> so wow. imagine that you know what i mean that is strange pacific rim yeah that was a that was a cool elementary school to go to man so how did you end up in louisiana so i guess the health of my grandfather brought us back um on on my dad's side uh my mom and dad met after her first marriage ended. She brought the kids back to California, but he had kind of originated here too, my on my other grandfather. But when he built his business with the bow archery equipment, he had moved out to California. Okay. So my mom was born out there and things like that. Gotcha. And then with the military, we went back out there. Gotcha. Yeah. Mom and dad met at the the Peach Festival out in Ruston. Wow. Out in your place, man. Wow. That's cool. I think he proposed to her like 13 days later. Wow. She had three kids. He was like 23. I'm like putting myself in that position. I'm like, there's no way in heck I would. Yeah. That's, I you got to know yeah. something. I mean, he, I mean, he saw something he liked, something from California, you know, something sure. different and didn't, didn't mind the kids, you know, that's uh so kind of raised him them to up. take that on, I guess, you know, 
Yeah. Absolutely. That's why I'm saying I have a lot of respect for him. Like, wow, you know. For sure. Yeah. So I guess the next thing that got my attention about you is that you have a van. And yeah. Is it is that what you drive 24-7? I drove it here for you, man. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I got a van. It's got the license plate Explore. If you're ever behind me in town, that's me, you know, nice. usually. Yeah. Um, got into vans. My dad bought me one in high school. Okay. And um, I was pretty ticked off about it. I remember there was, our neighbor was in the car with us, and I was like, he saw me probably at my worst at that day. <laughs> We'd gone to a soccer game. My dad bought the van on the uh, – he dropped us off a soccer game, saw the van on the way, bought it, pulled us in. Here's the keys. And I'm like, I don't want to get in this minivan. Like, yeah. I'm not going to drive this thing. Are yeah. you crazy, Dad? I was looking at BMW Z3s for my first car, you know. I wanted a little coupe or something. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, looking back on it, it's been the most versatile vehicle ever. Yeah. Got a lot of equipment and things like that and just, you know, with all my hobbies, it's it's – I mean, there's a reason, right? It's a – it's a soccer mom's dream, you know? For sure, for sure. Yeah. But so now he, you got the full cargo. Yeah, I went full cargo, high top roof van, 2017 Ram Promaster. Yeah. It's a great van to have. It's really square. Um, <laughs> built it out as much as I as I want to right now. I um, still want to finish up some things on it. Um, I don't know. When I started, you know, the van life thing's real popular. No doubt. It's not like something that's that's new. Right. You know, it seems like everybody wants to have something they can take. And, and just some of the interests I had, it, it made sense. I could have something I can sleep in if i need to store equipment in if i want and have power everywhere yeah for sure so yeah you got the solar set up and solar everything. set up man i got so much solar i can i think i can play ps4 for like three days and i don't, even, I don't even play that but i like yeah. had i worked it into my thing i was like if i don't have sun how long can i go you know yeah yeah yeah. i put an oven in there um uh, fridge freezer um nice bed bed's more comfortable than my bed at home man it's like nice. five inch uh gel infused memory foam uh it was something I was like super, super passionate about when you're building it because you're just, there's so many questions when it comes to that. Like, right. what, what insulation do I go with? What? Yeah, and right. everybody's got an argument, and there's like yeah. big online forums. If you're thinking about, you know, van life, lost join. for days. Dude. Yeah, you'll be lost. Join some stuff on, on Facebook. I, I joined yeah. one that was specific to the Ram ProMaster okay. group. Um, guys were super helpful. And just even in the questions that I had that I didn't have to ask, I just would search what are people doing with this. Yeah. Um, I'm in a class B uh, group on Facebook. Which okay. is just like all, it's like, you know, like the pre-built. Oh, okay. Like you know, Dodge, Chevy, whatever, mm -hmm. and but there, there's a bunch of people there from the UK and stuff, and so they're yeah. always posting European vehicles as mm -hmm. well, and it's a little overwhelming if you really get on there and scroll through and it is. are like trying to learn, um, but. Yeah, and you got to figure out like where to source half the parts. They'll be sharing links to things, and it's like mm -hmm. I can't get this in the United States. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because van life's really popular overseas. Yeah. It's, uh, My big deal is I want a four wheel drive one, like super bad. Mm, yeah. But I'm starting to realize that that's like not necessarily financially available to me at this point in life. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking more towards a uh, a van pretty soon. Honestly, I've been thinking about it a lot, but I'm probably just gonna go with like a Chevrolet Express van. Okay, so like one of the little smaller than I got. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. maybe still you can stand top. up in it, right? Yeah, you can still stand up in those, right? Or not? Uh, not quite. No, I not mean, quite. Just like a re like a regular passenger van. Oh, I see. Um, I would just like rip it out and keep it super stealthy, low key. Yeah, uh, and I can like afford one, basically like a used mm -hmm. one, the way that I've been looking at it. So yeah, that's why I debated putting the Explorer plate on it. So I was like, it's pretty stealthy at this point. Mm -hmm. And if you like vans, I mean, the biggest way you can tell the difference is if they got that. Those Max Air roof fans on the top. Right. Those kind of pop open yep. fans. Um, I was at Ten Dog uh, Bar the other night, and they have. Uh, I think the owner's got a van. Okay. I parked out front. As soon as I saw, pulled up, I said, "That guy lives in his van or whatever." But I, from what I hear, it's like he's having a late night there. He'll stay in it. I don't right, know the guy right. didn't talk to him, but that's what I hear. That's what I hear, and it, it makes sense. You know, if you want to be somewhere for a long time, you don't want to necessarily go home. Mm -hmm. You know, I I even in high school, coming up and doing workouts early in the morning, I'd stay out late in town. I'm like shoot, it's already two o'clock. I'm just gonna pull the van up somewhere, go to sleep in the back, get up at you know five thirty and go running. You there know? you go. There and you they, go. It, it, it'd be times when the team would, I'd pull up to where the team was gonna be in the morning. They come knocking on the van, you know, waking me up. It's just I've been that guy. You know, I grew my hair out long. Okay, yeah, I did yeah, see that. Yeah, I grew it out real long. I just thought there's hey, there's only one time in my life I'm gonna do it. It seems like right now. That's it seems where like I'm at a, right now, man. Yeah, you're like, gonna grow it longer or what? Yeah, uh, it looks good like that. I don't though. know. I've been really debating on cutting it here recently, but that's because I've been running and working out and it's always getting in the way i feel like yeah. but it's just to the point where i can just barely like get into a little knot back there mm -hmm. um i, I wish i would have had the beard 
you know, I, I kind of shaved it now, but like, wish I would have had more of a beard like yours when I had longer hair. Cause yeah. that's the thing. You don't want to look like a girl, you know, with your long hair. Yeah. I don't but, know. At this point, I'm like, I got to ride it out through the winter at least. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what happens when, when summer yeah. comes around. Wait till hunting season ends, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you so you hunt a little bit. I saw that, Man, huh? I, I enjoy hunting. I enjoy getting out in the outdoors more yeah, than me anything. Yeah, me too. Like, I just enjoy, like, hiking and, like, climbing mm-hmm. mountains and just, you know, pushing myself and Absolutely. that kind of stuff. Um, I've gotten to be a part of a hunt, uh, an elk hunt. Um I've never killed a deer, never killed a duck, none of that stuff. Mm. But uh, always been passionate about it. Always been surrounded by it, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I've had opportunities to kill deer, uh, not like in the scope, missed it. But like I've gone hunting plenty of times mm-hmm. and sat in a stand and that kind of deal. But um, well, a lot of people don't like it around here because they're like, I'm gonna go sit in a stand for four or five hours, wake up, it's freezing cold. Yeah. You're staring at a pile of corn, but you know, I mean. You know, elk hunting is a lot, yeah, a lot different. It's a lot different style. Out m- west, hunting is, is on, you're on your feet. Yeah, you're yeah. on your feet. You're glassing for a long time. You're finding an animal you want to pursue, and then you're trying to figure out how I can make it work with the wind. It, to me, all those elements, it's almost like a video game or something. You know, you're trying to trying to participate in. It's different than just waiting on something oh, to yeah. come by. My dad was always really against, you know, these guys that had these big hunting clubs and did the whole corn thing feeding them with mm-hmm. cameras and all that he always hunted public land and that's been a, a, a more so of a trend lately is like i've seen those joe rogan has that public land owner shirt you know right, if you yeah. donate some money you get that one of those shirts but uh, i think that's kind of becoming a, a more popular thing we got all this land around us especially in louisiana and yeah and it's like that's our land to go out on and have fun and, for sure and, and it's funny because i kind of i see both sides of it or i get to hear both sides of it like Guys going on big high fences and hunting, you know, axis and all this other stuff that's just crazy abundant in West Texas. And, yeah. then, you know, you hear the same guys or your different guys, whatever, just like getting out. That's, I mean, I really want to go get fucking lost in the mountain and yeah. like have to pack an elk out. Oh, 10 I know. Miles man. Or whatever. Like, I want to experience that just because yeah. I know, I know it's not going to be a, a uh, fun a big bag of fun the whole time no but, but like, it's fun looking back on it yeah. man it's like would you rather do that or go to an amusement park and ride a roller coaster you yeah. know that's like the worst thing I'd, that's a different type of fun you know for sure you I don't mean, go telling somebody about how great your trip was to the six flags yeah you, so you you went elk hunting yeah you went pursuing elk yeah we did it was kind of a diy elk hunt yeah you know we learned about as much as we could learn online we met some people on instagram uh Steven Ranella, Meat Eater. We watched that pod, that po- sure. listen to that podcast and watch that uh, show on Netflix. It's a great hunting show. I mean, no doubt. Uh, seems like that guy keeps it really real. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just going out on these ranches and hunting. He's all hunting public land most of the time. And, uh, yeah. and if he misses them, he puts it on there. You know, he puts it on there. He missed it and he rushes his shots. And I, I like watching that, the realness. But he also has made me kind of love cooking deer meat because that's what people people either say i hate deer meat you know yeah, what i mean and yeah. they're cooking it wrong or they're handling it wrong and things right. like that and just sort of learning that has been just a, a hobby of mine you know what i mean i've got all the books and all the things and so far i mean i got a roommate he's he's had my deer meat he says that he says jansen hadn't cooked a bad meal he told my friend the other day and i was like yeah that's awesome to hear you know yeah, sure. <laughs> somebody else tell you that something else good and it's all been venison you know so yeah so i, I killed a couple of deer last year and about ready to kill some more come december and january and yeah. stuff like that but the elk hunt um we went out to some public land in uh, the San Juan mountain range. It's where my buddy wanted to go. He wanted to shoot um, with a gun, so he had a tag. And I kind of told him the first year, I'm like, I'm not going to buy a tag. We're both walking out in the woods with a tag. That mm-hmm. just seems kind of ignorant. I'd rather one person, let's see if we can be successful, you know. Right. Uh, I think we're going to have enough meat for both of us regardless. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have plenty enough meat. <laughs> we underestimated, man. We got our butts kicked. Uh, I think, I mean, we hiked in like seven miles the first day. And then we ended up totaling up like 15 or 20 miles after a couple of days, um, kind of being back in there. But I I drove, and about two o'clock we stopped the van up in the mountains at like 8,000 feet, and then we ended up kind of climbing up to 12,000 feet and camping. And our our bodies just, I mean, he really got bad altitude sickness, you know what I mean? And I've never seen somebody just sleep so much, yeah, you know. And I and I felt for him because like I, hey man, take this ibuprofen or something, you know, and he. Five minutes later, I look, and he had dropped him out of his hands. He's asleep again. You know what I mean? So mm. he was just miserable. Dang. And after a couple of days of that, um, eight-degree temperatures, really snowy, really windy on the mountains. There was, you know, droppings all around us, tracks all around us. We were in the right area, the right places. A lot of our friends had pointed us in the right directions using the Onyx maps and all sure. that. Um, but uh, I think 
when it came down to it, physical fitness is it's either physical fitness or clothing is what usually gets people. Right. They're wearing the cotton or the wrong stuff, you know. Yeah. So and, had um, you been training before that? I was okay. You know, I was fine. I was like, let me get up glass, even if you don't want a glass, you know. Um, yeah. And and I made it through all right. I uh, definitely could have been more fit. Uh, right. One of the things I didn't think about was our freaking water in our um, straws was frozen yeah. because it's sub, you know, freezing temperatures. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't think about insulating my pack in that sort of way. Right. So um, I went a lot. A couple, first couple of days, I went without too much water. You know, I think I got to the point where I had I had melted some snow had some instant coffee that was just the worst ever it's terrible and i think that was the point where i said man are you about ready to come off this mountain yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah. one of the things we really like when sour patch kids okay they were frozen you put right. them in your mouth you gotta let them sit there you gotta let them sit on let there for marinate. a little bit otherwise you're <laughs> <laughs> you ever eat like an icy sour patch kid but those yeah. were like the first things that went man we ate those yeah cliff bars and all that and um you ever heard of colin o'brady mm-hmm -mm. So Colin O'Brady, so. uh, Joe Rogan podcast, how I found out about this dude. He walked across Antarctica. Oh, nice. Like a couple months ago. Uh, but he was talking about they had to have this special bar created for him that had like a certain amount of like coconut oil and stuff. Uh -huh, just where fats. It huh? wouldn't freeze as much. Because he, do, he was telling stories about like dudes breaking their teeth on cliff bars because the cliff bars yeah. are so frozen. They're trying to eat it so quickly that they would just crumble their teeth. Uh, but yeah, you saying that? Yeah, do you know Mike Horn? I don't think so. Yeah, he's an explorer. Um, I think uh, Mercedes or I think Mercedes sponsors him and everything like that. Okay. But he like circumnavigated the Earth like using only like human powered things like sailing and and walking and cycling and stuff okay. like that. He went down the Amazon River in a boogie board and like got caught by dangerous. like some, yeah he got caught by some drug lords and they were like who are you and he pulls out this laminated magazine it's like this is what I'm doing you know I'm staying in the I think he got involved with some people. They had he kind of had like guns to his head. Had to get saved, you know. Some situations. Wow. They were like, basically, you stay in the river, you know, don't get out the river because this is all our territories with drugs trafficking and all that. Um, huh. And so he ended up like fishing nets for food every night. And he's got some cool stories. That even his Wikipedia is just cool. You know, he's yeah. Mike Horn. If you ever, okay. that's a, yeah, that's a cool guy. He's older now, but he he went across Antarctica and did the whole nighttime stuff. They pulled sleds with their own with all their food, just fats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Had some polar bear experiences and all that. Um, wow, that's some, that's a different level right there, man. There's another guy that circumnavigated the world on a bicycle, Mark Burnett. It's like Burnett. maybe a year or two ago. I mean, like obviously he had to fly across oceans, but he did it in like forty days or something. Wow. Like he was like averaging like two hundred and something miles a day, wow. like just booking it. On a, on a bike on a bicycle Damn. yeah on a road bike he had a whole crew behind him and like everything yeah. was scheduled out it was it was a big undertaking um, do a lot more than we're capable of yeah no doubt everyday stuff you know we don't push our our minds and our body and our physical fitness all that to well them. and like all this like i guess what i've been passionate about is like you know people like i don't know if you know like cam haynes Cam, yeah, he's a Cameron Haynes, bow he's hunter, a bow yeah. hunter, yeah. yeah, but he's also like an ultra Strong, marathon dude. Yeah. guy, yeah, yeah. It's just like he and like David Goggins, people like that are like really inspiring to me right now. Just like you can literally yeah. push your body to the extreme, and like, it's not gonna happen overnight, but you know you got to keep keep pursuing. That's where he's about forty something, huh? Or is he fifty now? Who? Cameron? Yeah, I think so. He's, yeah, he's that's where I want to be. Because, like, I mean, Joe's 50. Joe Rogan's yeah. 50. And, I mean, he looks like an animal. Yeah, I would dude. not want to get kicked by him. He's a beast. Yeah. Uh, that's Those are guys I want to be like when I'm that age. You know yeah, what I mean? Still, sure. Still learning, still progressing in their life, you know? No doubt. Um, I guess what else are you passionate about right now? Let's see. Well, real estate. I want to get into real estate. Okay. Um, been saving my money for that. And when I was in high school, I was like, let me save 10,000 bucks. And now I'm in college. I'm like, let me save a hundred thousand, you know, just to have some money to put somewhere. Um, I, I'm an RA at the college. Okay. So, uh, kind of already get to take care of people and see them on a weekly basis, check in with them and stuff like that. Um, you live there uh, for free. Yeah. Free, uh, room and board. So your food, your meal plan, it's a good job. You um, in one of the apartments or yeah, I'm in the apartments. Yeah. I was there since sophomore year. So I've had a kitchen and everything. I brought in an Island just to give me some more um, counter space to work on and place. cut on everything. You had the same place the whole time? Yeah, for the last three years, man. Nice. I, I've kind of nested. You yeah. know, I'm afraid to move now, but <laughs> uh, 
but that's just i'm ready to get rid of some stuff my parents moved and they were like hey you got to come get all your crap out of the out of the garage mm-hmm. so i had to get a storage unit which was a pivotal moment in my life where i'm like okay is my stuff gonna own me or am i gonna own my stuff right, you know so right. I'm, I, and it's full of nice things that i want to get rid of you know yeah. trolling motors and paddle boards and okay. canoes and all that stuff that yeah. are just big things i don't have anywhere else to put right but um uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll take it with me when I get a house. That'd be it'd be great to have a space that's just bigger. Yeah. You know, just to work in, to photograph in. You For know, sure. I, I take a lot of indoor pictures in my apartment. Um, but it's like you gotta move some couches. You gotta do some things. You gotta put some legwork into it. Right. You know. But um, it's worked out. I mean, I mean, selling pictures out of the out of the dorm room. You know, it that's works. Super man. cool, man. And it's cool. People are pretty forgiving. I feel like of that, and they come to your place. You know, like I'm a college kid. You know, just trying to pursue my passions. My roommates have been okay with all of that so yeah. far you know we it's, it's fun having people over you know um being attached to the college like that um yeah it looks like you got to work for the college in yeah some degree. digital media assistant i guess is the the title i'm i'm doing uh help out the university photographer there, she's got a lot of um, work that she does there's a couple of them and um just being able to relieve her a little bit um it's odd times that you get to work it's like you know, it might be 12 in the day or two o'clock, do this award ceremony or do that. So it, it's, it fits in my schedule well. Um, but I do 20 hours a week there. Okay. Um, that's just a steady every couple of weeks. You ain't got to worry about it. if you want to take off from work, you know, you still got something coming through, which is, yeah, it's great to have that. No doubt. Um, good experience. I had worked with her, um, back when I worked with new star freelancing for them. And then when I came on a visit for, uh, cross country and track, they were like, we got to take you by the, they knew I was a photographer. So they said, we're going to take you by the photography studio. And, uh, just conveniently they're editing pictures of the track and field. You know I mean? They did it all up, dude. It was, <laughs> it was nice. You know, um, a lot of guys there treat me like family. And I just right. felt like I was looking at tech, you know, and looking okay. at, I had a lot of other, you know, sc- smaller schools hit me up in different States. But, uh, but I just felt like home, you know, at ULM and, it, and it's for the most part, it's been the best decision, you know, debt free, you know, and, and getting paid to go there, you know, mm-hmm. with refunds and all that. That's, it's kind of bizarre that, that that's how that works with tops and everything. But yeah. if you're overfunded, you get checks to be there. And, right. And a lot of people live off that. You know, they don't work. They don't have jobs. They, they stay living off their academic scholarships and things like that. For sure. For sure. Yeah. That's or they blow it, you know, <laughs> either that. No doubt. And then they're out of there by sophomore year. Cause they, but they end up with a 50 ULM hoodies or whatever that they bought from the bookstore. <laughs> I haven't been there, man. I, I get stuff <laughs> on sale like the first year and I was like, I'm going to get what's given to me at this point, yeah, you know, through work yeah, and jobs sure. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And like you just get given stuff, period. If you're, exactly. a, if you're a student and you want, you want, if you need a t-shirt, you can find one. I'm sure yeah. like there's a, oh, it's somebody throwing our t-shirt around. Yep. People uh, leaving and moving on or people getting fired. Yeah. Coaches get fired and they're like, yeah. I don't want all this crap, you know, <laughs> you can have it. Yeah. You mentioned that like you had a bunch of coaches change in college. Yeah. Um, I think just they had a hard time just with, with my specific event coaches filling a full-time position. Um, yeah. So a lot of guys would work and have different jobs. Um, they'd be working at the running store, things like that. And I mean, realistically, when you get married or, you know, have a fiance and things like that, you got to go where it's going to pay. So a lot of them went back home to where they were from Delaware gotcha. and places like that. Um, so it, it was challenging because I'm a difficult student or athlete in a way, because some days a Saturday, I might want to work a wedding, you know, yeah. and I'm like, coach, do I, am I really needed this track meet or is it going to matter for conference if I don't show up to this one? You know what I mean? It was different in some ways. Cause it's not always about, it's kind of an individual sport, you know? Right. Right. So some of the guys didn't, didn't like that, you know, but it, I was like, do I really want to go through another coach explaining this whole situation about my jobs? And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, and one of my coaches, he told me, he's like, you got your whole life to work. And I was like, I, I remember thinking in my head when I walked out, I was like, I don't want to work my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start now and try to, you know, retire early. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So that well, was kind of a, like you said, it may, it sounds like you kind of may have had to miss some opportunities because of yeah, the track. Just a and, few. Yeah. And that, that puts things in perspective pretty quickly, you know? Yeah. I'm especially, like I said, working with a three 30 in the afternoon, uh, Monday through Friday and then racing on Saturday, gave me Sundays to do photo shoots and things like that. But I, I loved it. And I wish I could have focused on, on one thing at a time, but that's just not my personality. You know, I dive into different hobbies. I'll be into it for like two months, catch me, you know, a couple months from now and I won't really be even talking about it, you know? Yeah. So if you, know, if you don't like what I'm interested in, just hang out long enough. You'll still be my friend by the end of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, going back to Colorado, 
I saw you had to put chains on the on the van. On the van, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Practice putting chains on a van before you need to put chains on a van. Okay, <laughs> I'll definitely do that. This guy told me he said, uh, "To take this road, go up to the top here. You're gonna be able to glass out and look for elk, but go early in the morning. You know, get up at five or whatever." So we went and did that. It was pitch black, dark, and I just drive all the way up to the top of this mountain. It's high, and I mean, it's a steep incline. I'm already like, you know, testing my my van abilities. Right, you know, like right. what's what's the What's the and so I got to where a point where I had to put the chains on. I was spinning out around these real sharp switchbacks, and we did that. My buddy he put his, he put his on the right side. I put mine on the left side. Um, got to a, a boulder in the road or whatever, and ended up ripping the chain off. But I mean, I had put it on incorrectly. I didn't know you had yeah. to cinch it down afterwards. I saw the elastic bands, but didn't see the other pieces. I, there's a piece of the chains that hooked to those elastic bands. Come to find out, you know, I thought those were extra chains. I was like, mm, what's this? You know, just toss it to the side. <laughs> I was like, looks good to me. You know, it looked about right. Yeah. And uh, so it ended up breaking off, and we got to a point in the road where we couldn't go anymore. And my buddy's freaking out. He's like, let me get out of this van. You know, he's like, you know, this is scary stuff. I, I just I felt like Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat. You know, I was like, let me go back to sleep in the back of this bed. We'll talk about it when the sun rises. Right, yeah. We'll and we'll assess, the, we'll assess the situation. Yeah. And we were, man, we were six inches from pulling our tire off the side of the mountain. Really, I mean, it, I was like, I can't. Turn it any more that way, my man. I'm going to have to back it up straight, make like a three-point turn to just turn around. And we come down. I think I had to get a repair on the van when I came back. Uh, one of Because we had put the chain through a brake line or something. It ripped out the brake fluid. It was oh, no. leaking or something on the way back. Because I thought, did my, brakes really, did my brakes really go out on this mountain? Yeah. You know what I mean? But my brake pads were fine. I just had to get a new brake line when I came back. It still cost me 400 bucks, But, yeah. you know. That's, that's the only bad part about taking a vehicle. But, I mean, look at all the – I did 36 nights this year in my van. And – uh that's a lot of uh, hotel costs you're yeah. saving. So, I mean, if you pay a little bit and I mean, dude, risk for reward, you know, there that's you go. my whole deal right now is like, I mean, I, I am homeless. So, like, I want <laughs> to be able to, like, keep all of my belongings with me at all times, yeah, I guess, makes sense. Or, or with it. And I know where they're at. And they're a little spread out right now. And I mm-hmm. have the, the essentials and all my camera equipment, recording right. equipment and stuff. And uh, that's the thing about getting a storage unit and I put my stuff in there. I haven't taken my canoes out. I did like the other day was like the first time, but uh, just because it's like you got to go to storage, you got to load it up, mm-hmm. gotta, you know, do all these things. Yeah. And I missed having things just right there. For sure. You know what I mean? Which when I get a house or something like that, it would be a lot more convenient, but I'm making do, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm living a good life for a college kid. You know, Not I got bad. all these fun stuff. I'm always having, having a good time, but I get to work odd hours with photography shoots and um, get to kind of make my own schedule and things like that. So, um, all those fit into my personality well, you know. For sure. For sure. I had something and I lost it. So You're good. You've been skiing? I, I'm a snowboard guy. Okay. Um, yeah, I went first time I'd ever went to I went to Colorado once, like my freshman year of high school with my brother. We went in the summer, went mountain biking. And then in college, sophomore year I guess. Went with my fraternity to Breckenridge, mm. and I had been a big wakeboarder at that point in life, and you know, I had the choice, you're going to ski or snowboard, and I was like, well, I'll yeah, do the snowboard. Yeah, snowboard's way cool, right? And then, uh, yeah, my buddy Ryan Frick took me to the top of a blue and <laughs> said, see you at the bottom, <laughs> and I fought it so hard on day one. You're scared? I, no, I just didn't know... You just needed to go. Like, yeah. You just need to go and bomb the mountain and like learn to curve to like, mm-hmm. you know, slow yourself down. Carve, I guess I should say. And my buddy Randy Bennett said, "You need to let it go." I had like gave up. Like I like fought it for like two or three hours and went in and to the to the lodge or whatever and was like, "I'm taking the day off. I'll, I'll go back <laughs> at it tomorrow." And Randy was like, "You need to let it go. Like you have to let it go. You just have to let it go." And yeah. I was like, "What does that even mean?" And then the next time, I, the next day, went up there and I started to fight it again. And I was like, all right, let it go. And I've just been bombing the mountain ever since. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a big motivation to why I moved there. Um, I had been yeah. three or four times at that point and just absolutely love snowboard and love the mountain, love to be up high like that, love living above 10,000 feet. Like, yeah. I would, I just. 
special. It's a special place. A lot of people don't get to experience. Yeah, it. well, I just think like the air is pure. Just like mm-hmm. life is harder. People to are live. great. Like yeah, you. You're There's all... no like weird times of day that people are working out. They're working out all throughout the day. Yeah, well, I just I don't know. It's just a quality of life there that's that's indescribable, and no. you you have to you can't be soft and live there. I mean, you can, I'm sure, if you if you always live there, but like like you said. A Louisiana kid ends up at ten thousand feet. Like, mm-hmm. can easily get altitude sickness pretty quickly. I guess yeah. did y'all not acclimate? Not really, man. That yeah. was my fault. You know, yeah. I just think we're just gonna drive in. Yeah. And my buddy had been training, uh, and, and he says people were always making fun of him because he'd be out in these California. He was in California at the time working, mm-hmm. uh, training with like you know fifty, sixty pound packs on his back For on sure. these trails, and people were like, "This is a day hike trail. What is this guy out here yeah, doing yeah. training with all this weight on him?" You know, they didn't. I was utter- hiking LPP with fifty pounds on my back. There you go. Man. So people are looking at you like you're an idiot. Oh, yeah, you know? for sure. Hey, let them look. Yeah, it's fun. You know There's- what I mean. I mean, I've done that. I've hiked that. I've never ran the full trail, but I've hiked it like five or six times. And so yeah. is that the? I know there's some mountain bike trails out there. Yeah, I've, that's the is same that what you're talking about? Mm-hmm. They'll it's wear like, you out. They're pretty good. Oh yeah, and it's got some good hills and some good elevation change and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just put my headphones in and start grinding. We used to do that. We used to run uh, long runs, and then my buddies and I would load up our bikes. I got a couple of Trek mountain bikes, and. Uh, we go out to LPP and and then and and mountain bike after that. Yeah, that was always a good Saturday, you know. For sure. Yeah. Uh, are you a, are you a music guy when you run? Uh, do I listen to music when I run? Yeah. Um, usually somebody else was always playing something. Yeah. Um, I definitely like to when I'm on my own and I, I look back on my Snapchat like some of the uh, videos I had saved when I was in New York and different places. Uh, definitely listening to music then because it's like you know you don't really know the area, but. Right. But when I'm out, we're usually running with guys, so we're just conversationalists. You for know? sure. Yeah. For sure. That's something that I haven't really gotten to experience now. Like, I ran cross country and played soccer and all that kind of stuff. And But, like, now that I've really picked up running, I do a lot of it by myself. Mm. And I do it without any music. Oh, you don't do music at all? I, I'll do it every once in a while with music. And I can definitely, like, you know, I, I listen to, like, fast-paced music the whole time. Mm. So I... I you know, try to stay with the beat sometimes or whatever and yeah. pick up the pace. But I don't know. I just, I guess I like getting in that, that zone, that weird mindset that, you know, you get in. I mean, I'm sure you've experienced it during races and stuff. You know, you like almost just zone in on oh, what's dude. ahead of you. And races just, were the best. Yeah. Just like training was, was hard, but races were the best. Yeah. You know, I see, I haven't done a race in just com- 10 years. Really? Probably. Just to be completely dead at the end of it. Yeah. Know that you gave your all, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? That feeling that like where you're still a couple hours after a race, like oh, still trying to catch your breath, yeah. or you get runner's cough afterwards, mm-hmm. you know, from your lungs just hurting mm-hmm. when you're running. But that's uh, see the last time I experienced that kind of like fatigue, mm-hmm. uh, I took a jujitsu class in Shreveport, and like you do, like training and like they go through a technique, and then you mm-hmm. do three rounds of rolling, five minutes with some somebody that's about you know your size or whatever, and you just wrestle them and try to pin them and try to tap them out. And it was just exhausting because I had no idea what I was trying to do. I just knew I needed to get out of like, get out of the way from this person because they knew more than me. Oh yeah, that's so it. I was just like, it's like this whole fight or flight mentality type thing, and and just like, all right, just hip escape, get out of here, push away. Like I don't know, it's funny. they're trying to teach you a lesson, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the last kid that I wrestled was literally seventy pounds more than me. He was. Dang. At least ten years younger That's than insane. me too, because his, I saw his mom pick him up from <laughs> from the class. Oh my god! But I, he ended up just like sitting on me, and I just like looked up up at him. I was like, "Sorry, bro, I'm gassed." He was like, "It's all good, man. I'm winning." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, you are. Yeah, That's awesome. you are." Have you ever been uh, like injured in some of the training you done? No, nah, you know, not significantly. Yeah, not significantly. Um, I broke my wrist. Uh, so I was the kicker with the football team mm. in high school for West Monroe. And it's awesome. Sophomore year, JV game, Rustin High. Uh, yeah, Rustin High. Uh, my center, Ash Alds. Shout out to Ash. <laughs> he was sick that night, literally throwing up on the sidelines. We scored, go out for an extra point. Ash snaps the ball over my head. Um, this was about the fourth or fifth game of organized football that I ever played in my entire life. So this is your nightmare just coming to life. And so I was like, I got to go be the hero. 
So I turned around and went to pick up the ball and realized that I was on like the 40 yard line and there was like four of linemen coming to crack, you know, just mm. crack my skull. <laughs> and so I slid, I chose to slide whenever I did. I left this arm out like to catch myself. Some dude just launched on top of me while I was already down and uh, I had locked this arm out. So everything got forced down and broke the tip of my my wrist off there. Mm. But I've had some knee issues, just like um, tendonitis or whatever. But I took some time off, did some yeah. stretches. You know, uh, I like to roll out a lot. I don't know if you, you know, do oh, yeah. foam rolling that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, got to especially when you're when you're running. Yeah, I like fucking with ice baths and that kind of stuff too. I don't know if yeah. you mess with that. Yeah, a lot of a lot of guys did. I was I, I enjoyed it. You know, yeah. sitting in there about eight or nine minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, been messing. Where do you with do it. that at? Um, so my family shop had a big ice oh, really? machine. Yeah, nice. And I like found a big Rubbermaid tub, like a hundred and fifty gallon Rubbermaid tub that I could sit down in. Yeah. It was super gross. I had to like power wash the crap out of it, but I got it clean, somewhat sanitary. That's some of the things I miss is ice baths. We used to have a chiropractor come in every every week. Nice. Or they still do. I just they would do the football team and everybody. Oh yeah. That's I'm it. like, that's about fifty bucks right there. For just sure. coming in, like keep it crack everything and yeah. you didn't even know you had, you know, mm-hmm. and then get you in and out. I love it that. was good seeing that guy. Yeah. I love that. There's a dude on YouTube I always watch. His name is Dr. Bo Hightower. He's a I wish I knew how to do some of that stuff, man. He's a chiropractor for like a bunch of mixed martial artists mm-hmm. in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he's got a big YouTube page, always cracking fighters and celebrities. Oh, you just watch stuff. it for like, is that one of those like guilty pleasures? Uh, I guess it may be so. Or it just, like, just kind of lines up on your, you know, you'd be streaming and something yeah, yeah, pops yeah, up, you know, yeah. next thing you know, you're watching now, cats. He does some yeah. really unique techniques and I'm all, I'm really fascinated with it. Um, yeah. He, he uses like a big hammer and like a rod to like, if you're like shoulders out of place, he'll like hammer it back into place and... It's it's some really unique stuff that I've never like seen in person before, and so I guess it gets my attention that way. But you ever been out of the country? Man, I went to Mexico before nine <laughs> eleven on a cruise, and that was it. Like, that was it. I don't even have a passport right now, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about mine either. I lost my passport when I was in Costa Rica on a bus. I had like two. I thought the idea was like good to have two wallets just in case somebody stole one. I was like, oh, I got the other one. It didn't bite me in the butt because I. I left that wallet. My buddy calls me right as I'm supposed to be getting off this bus and the driver never turned the lights on and it's not his fault, but I'm like, you know, if you turn the lights on, you have that instinctive, like, Oh, let me check to see what I left, you know, left my passport. It was like a 300 something dollar trip that ended up being two next day air tickets that are 800 bucks for my buddy and I, because it was my fault. You know, we had to stay, go to the U S embassy and do all that. But it was a, it was a fantastic learning experience. Yeah. I learned how to, you know, from my friend, just, being patient with me because he was definitely upset and also like um you know how to deal with that situation when you do lose your passport and stuff like that i think they gave me like one that was good for like 90 days or something like that and i was supposed to go and and renew it or whatever Mm -hmm. i haven't done that yet but i mean when i plan to go back out i will i would have enjoyed it because i wanted to go to canada and some places that i was up north this summer i did a big trip i went to montana shot a wedding there and then uh, Seattle, went down to Oregon, San Francisco, um, came down, went to Vegas for a few nights, and then uh, back up to Colorado for a couple weeks. That was a big trip. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Um, my van with the Explore license plate, I got a, I got a page on, on Instagram. It's um, Dora the Van, like Dora okay. the Explorer, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And there was a time when I was going through this little kind of Indian village, um, and they had a bunch of stray dogs everywhere in Montana. And I was like, I pulled up and I said, how can I, uh, I said, is it okay to like steal a dog? You know? <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, man. It was like, they're just everywhere, you know? So I yeah, got yeah. some food, spent like 50 bucks on some food, collar and all this stuff. And I, I turned around after I left the grocery store and the guy, there's like a homeless guy that was sitting there. He looked like he was homeless. He was just hanging out. And, uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, you can, you can have this dog if you want pointing over this dog, you know? And I was like, he's like, you got any money or anything? I was like, yeah, here's five bucks for your dog. You know, I appreciate it. And this other lady came out and she was like, you giving him the dog? You know, like, I think his name was Socks because he had like the white feet. Okay. It's a funny story because she was like, she's like, you're not going to eat him or anything. You're not going to kill him, are you? And I'm like, no, 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 no. 
She's like, I know what? I live in a van, but <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like looking at the situation. I was like, well, she has a point, you know. <laughs> I look like I'm a dog catcher, <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm a Sue eating Sue dog eating Indian or something like that. Oh. And, I, and I was like, well, I respect that, but I'm not gonna you know eat your pup, you know. Yeah. So I had this dog and he's sitting in my lap, and I'm like taking pictures, you know, while we're driving or whatever. And thinking, yeah, how cool is it? You know, I got this dog I'm going to go hiking with for for a little bit. And uh, he seemed like he was having a good time. I let him out. He started whimpering like one time. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I need some water or something. And uh, I let him out the van. He, like the first time ever, that stray dog, I felt like a collar and like felt like some resistance on its neck, yeah. you know. And I didn't put the collar on him, but the guy did. And uh, so it wasn't very tight. And he pulls out that collar and just takes off running down the road. And he's running back and forth on this highway and these, all these cars are stopping and looking at me like I'm, you know, I'm holding this, I'm holding this leash and yeah. collar. And then I go up to the go- guy's car and I'm like, look, man, it's, it's been my dog for like 30 minutes. You know, like, it's like you don't have to wait and hold traffic. Like, it's all right. Like, if he comes back, he comes back. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he took off running. I, I take the van. And I'm driving kind of behind him, trying to figure out where he's going to go. Gets it on an overpass and uh, just takes like a 90 degree turn and just jumps off this bridge <laughs> and just. I'm like, okay, I see some people out to the side. I'm like, maybe there's people fishing or some water. I look down and like, just rocks. The dude just fell like 200 feet to his death. Oh and every, my god! And I'm like, you know, I'm walking around the corner and they're like, oh my gosh, a, uh, like a billy goat just fell, you know, because there's always billy goats down there. And here I am holding the collar, and everybody's like, I'm like, no, nah, I don't think it was a billy goat. I'm like, that's your dog, you know? I'm like, they're like freaking out for me, and I'm like, well, he's kind of my dog, like you know, he's, <laughs> you know, like I felt <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I felt terrible, but I'm like, well, like he kind of did that to himself. Like I didn't yeah. really like jump off the bridge for him. Right. Dude, right. it was crazy. And then I and I felt bad cuz I was like I want to grab my camera and take pictures of these goats down here, you know, cuz they're like, it's pretty cool. It was the first time I ever seen some yeti goats like that. Yeah. And uh they were like trying to persuade me to go back and climb down there and all these things. So I ended up climbing about halfway down this like real really like a sheer kind of cliff face. And I got to where I was scared. Yeah. And I'm like cuz they were like you need to go down there and like he might still be alive and all this stuff. And, and I finally got to a point where I could see that he had died and everything. And I felt real bad the rest of the time. Cause this lady, all these kids were there. I was like, you guys take your kids, like, go, you know, keep going down the road. Don't watch yeah, me yeah, go yeah. down here and try to like, you know, put this dog out of its misery. Right. Anyways, I felt messed up for like, you know, several days. I was like, I can't own anything. Like <laughs> I'm never going to have a dog, you know? Yeah. My experiences with dogs haven't been so great. I lost my eye and this <laughs> dog just commits suicide after knowing me for 30 minutes. <laughs> You know, that's, that's, <laughs> I can imagine how your mind would start to fight you on that. Yeah. So I still have the collar in the van. I don't know. I need to give it away and get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's dude, like, like hanging from the <laughs> memories. Dude, man. Always looking at it. Yeah. That's some heavy, that's, that's heavy, a heavy story. Yeah. I got back, gave away the dog food to my friend. Yeah. <laughs> then, you know? Man, that's crazy though. Like, like part of me wants to be like, you'll get over it. You, know, you only knew the dog for 30 minutes. Yeah. But I've never like. I guess oh, I have watched a dog die. That's it's never fun, but right. Uh, it's just a freak situation, you know. Yeah. I'm like, this is gonna be a cool story by the end of it, you know. But it's sad right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you you really wanted a dog, I guess. Yeah, I thought it'd be cool, you know, just have a dog for a little bit. I was probably gonna return him back to the village when I got done with it because I was coming back that same way. But gotcha. yeah, a lot a lot of guys I see traveling, they have their own animals with mm-hmm. them, and and cats do well in vans and stuff like that. But it wasn't really a long term plan to keep the dog. But I was gone, you know, a whole month, so I was probably going to keep it with me for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. But so what was the motivation behind the road trip? Um, I've been traveling since I was 16. Um, and I took off. Most most of the motivation then was to go train at high elevation and come back and run track and field. Um, and, and I did that for, you know, I'd go for a month, come back and race. Uh, then year after year, I fell in love with Colorado, going back there. Um, Where would you go? Uh, it started in Denver, kind of out around that Commerce City area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just like when you speak, like what you want, how it like comes to fruition. For sure. Yeah, and definitely, like I'm a huge believer in that. Yeah. Um, and I was just talking to the some law friends. Law of attraction. Yeah, exactly. And I was talking to some friends at church. And I was like, yeah, I really want to go to Colorado. And she's like, well, I got a sister there, and uh, so they hosted me the first time going down there uh, or going up there. And um, I like kind of stayed in a basement in like a hammock that I strung across the basement, and, and it was pretty cool. I'd get up and run eight miles in the morning, eight miles in the evening, until I eventually got like a really bad stress fracture, you know, okay. coming back. All right. But um, it was it's different. I mean, running up there, you run till your lungs hurt, and yeah. right down here, you run till your legs hurt, you know. Right. But that was a big motivation for traveling, and I guess my mom, being that I was so young, 
you know, I mean, I had, I wasn't like going up there to like act crazy or act a fool, you know, I was, right. I was, I had a purpose. So uh, she was okay with letting me do that. And I'm thankful for that. Cause I mean, year after year I've, I've traveled to different States. Um, specifically that big last trip, uh, I wanted to go to Montana. They were going to fly me out. And I was like, well, I'd rather keep the money you're going to spend on a flight and I'll, I'll put it towards gas. I'll shoot your wedding up there and then, um, get to see some, I've never seen the Pacific Northwest. It's beautiful, man. Have you been up? No, that's, that is a, it's, it's a big worth every mine. bit of it, dude. I was in Washington. Um, I get to see some places where there's snow on the mountain and then there's a beach right there with all these like trees that had fallen on the beach and everything like that. Uh, yeah, that's all in one site. Sure. I guess that's where they film like all the twilight series and stuff. A lot of these places okay. in, in Washington. So that kind of scenery was awesome. Yeah. Portland, Oregon was pretty cool. I only stayed a couple nights there. Um, I w- would have liked to have spent a little bit more time there, but I was pushed to be in San Francisco to meet a friend. We went to Yosemite together, and um, I never seen that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was that was cool. We cycled through the valley. Um, we try to do something memorable at every little place rather than just go there and like read a sign. You know? No doubt. Yeah, and that's that's yeah. kind of something that I've been battling in my head here recently. Is like I've gone and done and traveled, but it's like I feel like I've always been in a hurry to get there and like just gone to that specific place and like not like sought out things in between kind of deal and mm-hmm. i guess i'm i'm more open to that now that i'm starting to live this lifestyle and um i don't know it's just kind of where my head's been at here recently but yeah i i want to take a an epic road trip i kind of want to make the next six or eight months that way mm, i yeah. guess um my kind of plan right now is to go to dallas i have some good friends there and okay. a place to live there um, it's a good place to base. You got a nice airport, right. You're right? Close to everything you want to be at. Yeah, for sure. And so I would start out there, and and then just work connections there. And that, and I talked about me quitting and starting this whole lifestyle. A, a lot of it had to do with starting the podcast, and certain people who I am friends with would just say, "Hey, like, if you ever end out this way, you got a place to stay." And it's mm-hmm. like. I know people literally from Northern to Southern California. Like I know people in Washington and Oregon and it's like, yeah, I know people in North Carolina and New York city. And it's like, you know, people like go mm-hmm. explore, go see, and you know, live out that wanderlust. It almost sounds like you were born into that. Like you've been <laughs> kind of had a wanderlust about you for your whole life. Yeah. And it helps when you make friends, like you said, in all those places. Cause it's like traveling can be lonely by yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times you can't get anybody to go with you. Nobody mm-hmm. wants to go in a month. No, I'm not. I can't yeah. be gone a month. You're crazy. I got to work or I got yeah. got to be home or whatever it is, you know. But uh, when you're when you're traveling with friends, a lot of my buddies have filled up their passports, you know, like I've filled up multiple passports. And it's because half the time it's it's just visiting friends, not even going for work necessarily. But finding a job that you can do both, you know, is, is really nice. I, I, when I was there in Colorado, I would try to work a couple photo shoots for some neighbors or something like that that I would meet and, and just to, I'm like oh, in my head I'm like this is paying for gas and paying for me to be here I can kind of right. live off this money for the month you know especially yeah. like a wedding you can live off pretty well for a month um, for sure so it, it just makes sense you know all right so do you enjoy weddings do you seek out weddings because you enjoy them or because because oh, you've weddings? heard everybody hates weddings is that what no, it is I oh, hate weddings. you hate weddings I've, I've videoing wedding. or, or yeah, photographing yeah. Like videoing, yeah, videoing. I could see how you like. I could enjoy photographing a wedding, yeah, because I can take sixty shots in a second, and you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, not uh, exaggerating, but you understand what I'm saying. Like, if I'm out of focus, whenever the bride walks down the aisle, Mm -hmm. like that's I'm done. Like, well, and you're and you're a little bit more like in control of the day. Um, You're not necessarily like the wedding coordinator, but you are in charge of how things go with photography. For sure. And sometimes videographers get pushed out to the side and, and it's like, especially if you're working with a photographer, you don't know. Yeah. That's of course been my now. Experience. Yeah. That's been your experience. Yeah. So that's one of the things I disliked about videography besides that, just like the heavy editing and there's tons and tons of gigabytes. You get 80 yes. gigabytes or hundred gigabytes of footage. Yes. And I mean, there was like definitely times in my life where I was like, I have developed anxiety for thinking about this wedding video I needed to edit forever, mm-hmm. you know, and like I do my thinking like in the shower, I hop in there. I'm like, what do I have to do today? Kind of plan out my next couple of days. And it's always like the reoccurring, like I need to edit this wedding video. And oh, I just yeah. never would. People say to like combat that is just to like do it as soon as you do it. Like right. as soon as you film it, just edit it the next day or whatever. And yeah, while yeah. it's fresh on your mind, that's what these guys that do all those YouTube videos do. Mm-hmm. Um, but weddings in, in particular, I, I don't dislike them. It's just, more of a like i i don't have as much freedom on a wedding day um you're you're more of a documentary kind of fly on the wall which is 
certainly fun, but um, and you're creating memories that are really important to people or capturing memories rather. But um, I really like creating sets, building sets. Um, uh, I create a lot of backdrops I painted this year and um, just kind of getting into more like portrait work on that kind of side of things, which is not necessarily weddings. Um, and I said, I, like, I prefer to work with like individuals, you know, um, that are just by themselves. I mean, I definitely shoot a lot of couples and stuff, but I feel like what does best in the wedding field is like that lifestyle kind of like natural light sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I'm typically more technical of a photographer than that. Um, so for wedding days, I really prefer it when the bride and groom will come back after their wedding day and then shoot like, um, a set, like a actual portrait shoot together. So that way we don't have to spend that much time on the wedding day, um, right. shooting the couple photos. You often really that's stage stuff. Yeah. Often that's like overlooked. I feel like, you know, you get like a 15 or 20 minute window, um, with, with your fiance and that's, that's it, you know, um, yeah because you got to try to jam it all into six hours or eight hours mm -hmm. and there's a lot that happens, you know? Yeah. It's a busy so, day um, for sure. but I, I enjoy doing them just because I, I'll schedule out the timeline and, um, it, it's something that's, I mean, definitely lucrative and, and it's, it's fun to be a part of. Do you want to do that every weekend? Probably not just because it, it may not be as meaningful to you as it is them. Yeah. You know, in some ways, like you want to have your own hand. Everybody likes to have their own hand on their own signature kind of thing on something. For sure. Um, so a lot of wedding photographers don't last in it. And I don't know if they're not like charging enough or if they're just not taking control of the day enough. Um, I think I could still do it forever, but is it where I want to be? Um, probably not necessarily. Same with like people ask me to photograph their newborns. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. Like no offense. It's just like, I'm like a magazine, like editorial photographer, you know, like I, when I started out, some of the bigger jobs that I had was like at Under Armour and, and Kawasaki. When I was a lot younger doing stuff for modeling agencies and like products and things like that are what I like doing. So, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I want to be a wedding photographer forever. Yeah. Um, do you think but, that's I like mean, a, if people ask me, I'd love to do it. I'd love to be a part of it. Do you think that's like a control thing? Like you meant like all the things that you're mentioning, you, yeah. just, you would have like control of what the situation. I mean, is. definitely. Cause you, you have so many factors that go into a wedding day that, that, um, can really mess things up. You know yeah. what I mean? That's where your contract kind of helps you for sure. and, and saves your life. You know, got people sometimes you'll have an aunt or an uncle that thinks they're a photographer and they're shooting over your shoulder or you got a wedding coordinator from hell that's just crazy and yeah. and yelling the whole time and uh I, I i luckily i've been really fortunate to have great clients and um yeah, and, that, I, and that's always a question like you ever have bradzilla or anything? exactly like same with when you have like people coming into like um to rent a place you know you want to have that vetting process that that goes well and i sit down with them and talk to them for a couple hours before the wedding day and then we meet again you know, and I, usually I'm working with their engagements and bridles up until that point. So even if anything goes crazy, I always say like, blame it on me. You know, like, let me, let me take the blame for something. If you don't got a golf cart and you got to go across the pond, you know, and you got to walk and whatever, like I'll be the guy to go say, Hey, get the golf cart out here. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. I don't mind being that because I'm not family and I'm not going to like step on anybody's toes for and they're sure. going to really care about it. They'll be like, screw that photographer. Yeah, but yeah, most yeah. of the time they're like, Oh, thanks a lot. You know, they, they'll text me after appreciate like all the help today and stuff like that. Yeah, no doubt. It could be a control thing. I think it's more of just like, um, I mean, you want to you want to probably have the least amount of like um, factors that are going into things mm -hmm. all the time. You know, you want to be able to repeat the process a lot. Um, and for me, like doing portrait work, I can do that every day of the week. I don't have to do that just on Saturday and I don't have to book it a year in advance. So things will pop up and it's a little bit more spontaneous for me and I, and I enjoy it, you know? Yeah. So you mentioned like photographers not charging stuff and that's something that I've yeah. been like, you know, trying to figure out is like how much you're worth, that kind mm -hmm. of deal. Uh, can you kind of talk about maybe how you figured that out and how your process about that? Yeah. So self value is yeah. kind of like we're talking about how, how much you're worth and things like that. Um, I've had, I've taken a lot of master classes on that. Um, and really the last couple years ago, I was like, how can I make this business sustainable? Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that are charging, not a lot, um, they're not going to be in the game very long, right. you know, cause they're going to wear themselves out or they're just not going to be able to pay their bills. You know what I mean? They're yeah. going to have to do something else. For sure. So I looked at that from a business standpoint. I also uh, was feeling really guilty for a long period of time, uh, not putting pictures on people's walls, um, not like selling them products mm -hmm. and, uh, and things like that. Uh, and that happened when I went to like kind of a Christmas party of one of my clients and I saw like some pictures on their wall that was from a photographer like four or five years earlier and they had used me like every year. And I was like, well, that's my fault, you know? And 
because you didn't offer that product exactly and and i'm i'm I definitely love taking the blame for like issues that are in my life. I'm like, oh, that I'm the, usually the reason this yeah. is not going like that because I didn't handle it this way. But so I started selling products and that's helped a lot. I mean, you have to do taxes a lot differently, like on your monthly when you're doing sales and but learning how to do all that and learning how to do it the right way. Um, it's much more meaningful work and it's, it, it's something you're not afraid to be like, let me like if somebody wants to ask these questions, you know, like you can talk about because you're doing it the right way. You know right. what I mean? But for a lot of photographers, that they I can see why they don't because they're not charging enough or they're not, um, maybe it's a hobby or side kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get that, but I mean, it, I've kind of created this business that's like almost like higher end photos or just nice portraiture. It's not like something you're just going to get like, your friend to take some pictures of you you know what right, i mean if you're coming right. to me like you usually want like a nice product yeah and like you, you expect it shows that they were right. just on the iphone or whatever exactly yeah and i mean the way i looked at it was i was like if somebody wants a steak dinner they're not gonna uh they're not gonna stop at mcdonald's if they got the mcribs back you know right, what i mean right, right. if they want a steak dinner they're coming for steak dinner and, yeah. and that's kind of what i've tried to build my business off of is like how can i do the best treat people the best you know pay it forward you know if they tip me i'm gonna take like half that tip and buy buy them something for christmas you know it's just little things like that that i'm like customer service it lacks you know and a lot of photographers they're kind of like you hear these horror stories all the time and i'm like i don't want to be one of those you know so that's kind of where i'm at with that but like you had to like build it up at some point right like you had to as as far as monetarily or yeah yeah like as your prices like you had to you had to bump yourself at some point or a couple different times yeah and i I think you know you're so worried about like what people are going to think about that but right everybody that I worked with has handled it well. I mean, I, I definitely had a, a big jump a couple of years ago and, uh, I think it was something that was necessary for me more than anything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was, and that's where it starts, dude. It's if like, you're the one who tells somebody how much you're worth. And if you believe that, and if you have what you think to show it, then you deserve that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's it, definitely where I'm at right now. Like I'm not confident in my work yeah. enough to like charge a bunch of money well, to do something. I but also I like, knew I my work would grow as yeah, I got older. Yeah, I mean I don't have enough experience to right. doing what I want to do right now to charge a bunch of money. That's the, I guess a better way to look at it. Yeah, I knew my work would grow, um, like anything yeah. as you get into it. But sure. the way you treat people is kind of like out the gun. You're either gonna treat them well and take care of them, or you're not. Yeah. You know, uh, and I mean that's just that's just business. You know what I mean? You'll go back if the food wasn't that great. If they treated you well, and give them a second chance. You know, yeah. after the first opening or whatever. A couple well, of years and I, later. I guess I noticed you the other day, like you went to someone's home and like showed them their senior portraits or whatever. Like, yeah. So that was my, that was my apartment probably. Yeah. yeah. You like made a big deal out of it. Yeah. It's a premier proofing and selection meeting is what I call it. Tech- yeah. The technical term, but yeah. yeah but I mean, um, that's like a, that's a unique experience. Love it, man. As far as a love it. Goes. Yeah. Um, definitely like that kind of sales and products and things like that. Some people don't do it. They just give away everything on the digital file. Yeah. And that like was one of the things that was giving me like issues where I was like feeling guilty, for, so not because I was giving them everything, but I was kind of giving them what they had asked for, which is a lot of people want the digital images for Instagram, whatever. Right. But what does that mom want? You know, when her kids goes to college, you know, she gets to see that face every day. That's things you take for granted. For you sure. know, a lot of my clients would not print their images because they're busy people. You know, and I mean, I get that. I'm a photographer. Didn't start printing my images till a couple of years ago, and you see them on the wall, and you have a lot more you feel like, you know, like proud of what you do, you know, when you see it in print, you yeah. know, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. You're not seeking it out. It's, it's, it's there. there. Yeah. yeah. And my, and even my roommates that come in, they're like, Hey, yeah. So my roommate's a photographer. Like they'd be open up books and albums and showing off the pictures I take, you know, when I'm not even there. And I'm like, you, you wouldn't do that if you don't see it in print, you know, it's, yeah. it's a different, different style of things, but my customers have been much happier because I still give them digitals with the packages and, but just give them products as well. And even just small, like the smallest package, you know, they're able to take those images and give them away for Christmas gifts. The prints, you know, are like the, the wallets or five by sevens, whatever it is. They can give those away to people. And they start thinking about that. They start thinking, well, I need something for grandma. I need something for this. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that to me, that's just bringing people together. And you're, you're pleasing way more people than just somebody who's going to maybe never even download pictures off of a CD if that's what you give, you know, or if that's going to get scratched and you're going to lose that, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. What else are you passionate about right now? I know you said you always got multiple things going on. Yeah, um... I read a lot of self-help books. Okay. Yeah. Um, not like die hard, not a die hard reader, but I mean, if I get time to sit down, I like books like that. And For sure. Yeah. Um, you read any stuff like that? No, I'm not a big reader. I, I'm i not a reader at all. <laughs> I'll be straight up. 
Um, I guess another question I had was like, do you edit your photos a lot or you try to keep them raw or? Yeah. Um, I keep a clean editing style. Um, mostly because uh, five years from now, I want this to not look like 2019, you know what I mean? Or whatever the the trend is and the styles. Mm -hmm. There's definitely trends that people want and I, and I expect them to go to those people if that's what they want. You know what I mean? I I do a clean style. I definitely want to retain details in the face, but you know, I'll, touch up retouch lighting wise um i spend a lot of time on the images still because i'm like okay if i do something all right now let me put that push that back 50 percent because i know if, I, if i'm going to take a risk myself i'm like i'm going to come back to this later i'm like oh that's too much you know yeah, what i mean yeah. so i do spend a lot of time retouching it just may not necessarily show when you like look at the big big picture of it at the end of the day like oh well things weren't really adjusted they're still greens you know they're not desaturated all the way they're not hues they're not through the roof and the oranges you yeah, know yeah. whatever it is yeah, you know yeah. but people people are kind of dramatic with it but really they're taking to me i see it as like that's kind of like the easier route you know it's like let me put this filters on it and stuff like that so For it sure. just depends i'll get my images more moody i do more like on set like changes um mm -hmm. as far as editing and how i want to portray somebody i mean it's my responsibility at the end of the day and like a lot of people don't know a lot about it i think that's one of the areas that um, my business is does well at, like, is is showing them the different styles of lighting. You know what I mean? Showing them like For sure. how you can, because a lot of people don't know. They're like, yeah, I like his pictures. Okay, great. You know, yeah, well yeah. now you can, usually when they leave me, I kind of educate them about photography, and it's just through my love and passion of that. I'll just be talking to, them, well, I'm doing it like this because of this, and like right, right. sometimes they're like cool, and sometimes they're like, oh, awesome. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to share that, but I feel like when they pay me, you know, I kind of want to, you know, and it's just For sure. something that exudes, you know. So what do you shoot with? Uh, camera wise bodies yeah, yeah. or what? Yeah. Canon Mark threes, 5D Mark threes now. Um, we'll be eventually making a switch. I know mirrorless is a big deal. You're shooting on a mirrorless. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's like super feasible right now. I have a ton of lenses that are, um, that are not mirrorless lenses and not for all that. So DSLR stuff. Um, but I will, I will make a change. I've kind of helped myself to every three years upgrading, uh, cause there is new stuff every day and yeah. it's not always, you know, as what it's worth, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, definitely. It's like, well, we added one thing where you can talk to the audio in the picture, you know, whatever. Right, they they yeah, don't yeah, try yeah. to sell it to you for another three, four grand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Photography is just like that. Like any hobby, you know, you, oh, yeah. you can spend as much as you want in it Yeah. and sure. any business too. There are always people trying to sell you stuff. So oh, yeah. I just... I just keep what works for me and I don't worry about it as much. Um, I don't really look, look at other people's work as much either necessarily. I mean, I have those guys I look up to in the industry uh, I'll drop some names if you want, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Clay cook is a great uh, photographer. Um, and uh, Peter Hurley is a, one of the world's best headshot photographer. I really like the way he works on set and how he makes people feel. Um, Sue Bryce is a Australian photographer. Um, just like the number one Australian photographer. I like her business practice. She built up like a $900,000 um, photography business at one point with multiple photographers. Wow. But yet that was like the least amount of salary that she made personally that year. You know what I mean? So she's going back to working for herself mostly now. Hmm. But I kind of play off all those guys. And there's some people, you know, locally you check out just to see like how they're doing their pages and how they're getting their likes because you know you want to compare that stuff and right. see you know it sucks it sucks that you can put out a great photo and then get like 70 likes and yeah, that's yeah. not good enough by instagram right. standards because you got these high schoolers coming to me and booking with me and they got 500 likes on a picture of them at dinner or whatever you right. know <laughs> eating a taco or whatever yeah. you know what i mean and that, that can definitely be frustrating um and obviously we could talk about social media for days. But, yeah, no, I um, don't worry about it, man. Just do what, what works for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I went with the mirrorless simply due to, like, I want to, like, eventually I'm going to start vlogging. Yeah, it's gonna, oh, it's great. It's going to yeah. happen. And, uh, you should, man. You, you're you perfect guy for it. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, 4K capability. Uh-huh. 120 frames per second 1080p that was really nice man you can slow that stuff down yeah i mean it'll go up to like 180 or something but i haven't even shot at that mm. uh but yeah i've would you canon 80d was the first camera that i got and i just i wasn't satisfied with it i guess um i like to take photos with it uh compared to that thing but i don't know what were you gonna ask I was going to ask, what did you study in, in college? When yeah, you got I was going to ask that. you the same thing. I want to know that. Um, I graduated in marketing. Um, mm -hmm. I graduated in marketing with a concentration in key account development. 
<laughs> what? Yeah. So we had to yeah. have a concentration like midway through yeah. our marketing program and we'd go sports marketing or and she was like, What do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna be a salesman or something. And she was like, All right, well, so you wanna build relationships? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I do wanna build relationships and she was mm-hmm. like, All right, key account development and I was like, Sounds good to me. Nice. So what about yourself? I studied marketing initially. Everybody was like, that's great. You need to do marketing. Like, yeah. you'd be great. And I don't think it was what I thought it was going to be. I, I feel like marketing guys don't really work in the creative field as much. You yeah, know, they're yeah, mostly yeah. like they hire out for that stuff. For sure. So once I kind of figured that out and a lot of the accounting classes, I was like, this is something I'm going to pay somebody else to do. Like, mm-hmm. I do not want to do this. You know, yep. there was these people around me that were not like me. And I was like, so I kind of figured that out. And I was like, went and changed majors to communication. And I'm studying public relations, about to graduate in the spring on that. Public relations is pretty cool. It's like you said, building relationships with people, and it, it, it differs from marketing in a lot of way, aspects, but um, it's sure. along the same marketing, advertisement, public relation are all in the, tossed in the same conversations. But I, I specifically like communication a lot because I like studying like the different theories about, you know, and like the balance of communication. It's all. It seems like it's all uh, worth look. Everybody should study it. I think you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. Like we talk every single day, you know. But uh, that's where those self help books have really come into play with my with my major you know reading different stuff like that and learning about communication factors and for sure you know you it's into, taught me a lot you run into asia asia jordan over there asia jordan yeah um she she's active man she's doing yeah. she's doing well at, at all she does yeah for sure she's and a, your big big friend huh yeah big fan see, of asia i see just, the text I, messages and stuff yeah i support her uh, nice man she's i just i we come from similar places i guess and mm-hmm. uh I see where she's coming from and what she's trying to do. So she's a go getter. No doubt, she's super fired up all the time. It's uh, an energy level that I do not have all the yeah. time. Yeah, I respect the game. I respect the hustle. She's on top of things constantly. You know, I, sure. I I don't I can't even keep up with it just reading it. You know, or like whatever, like the stories yeah, and stuff like post, that. She like yeah, I'm like I missed a, a couple of days. I feel like I missed. <laughs> I missed you know half of what go, what's going on with Asia. You know. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what it takes to build a business is to be constantly on there. You know, I'll be taking spurts where I'm like, let me just chill out for a couple of weeks. And yeah. People notice it, you know? Yeah. There's, there's a, I'm going to refrain from saying who it is, but Go ahead, yeah. the guy in Rustin that like has a business and I'm like, bro, you need to post every day. Yeah. The other day I went and got on there to see if he posted anything. It'd been five days. I'm like, man, I just want to go and like shake you yeah. and be like, you you know how to do it like you're doing it already. Just I know. Pull out your phone every day, take a picture. And he thinks you can, you can guarantee he's thinking about it. He's yeah. like, oh, I should have posted today, uh, you know. But there's some there's like not a lot of people that are good at that and that and there's so many businesses, especially here in Monroe, that are like always seeking people like that. Yeah. And they'll hit me up or hit Asia up or hit you know Killian Hicks up or something like that. Mm-hmm. Those guys that are great at that, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, um, and I'm like, there's just not enough of us to go around. We can't build everybody's businesses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Killian Hicks, everyone's biggest fan. Yeah. <laughs> Love that, that dude. Yeah, I like that guy. Um, good friends with Chance Allen growing oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. We ran together. You know, he did all his crazy stuff going from sure. Canada to Mexico, dude, walking. I, Can you I believe I love that? following Chance and all of his Later ultra Gator. light uh, posts. He's cool, man. Later. He's always been that way, too, in high school. He'd be singing the songs nobody had ever heard of you know and like then all of a sudden we're listening to the music he's into you know yeah. he's he's a trendsetter yeah in that way our, our dads are actually friends me and oh Chance's really dads are actually well john allen yeah love that sure. guy I mean, he bought us all new uni- uniforms one year okay he's a great dude yeah, yeah the, he uh he sits behind my dad at tech basketball games and so oh, nice. i would go to tech basketball games with my dad and like i went to one shortly after me and chance did the podcast and ended up talking to mr john for a long time cool guy yeah for sure that guy kept up with all the times he had a little notebook he wrote down everything he knew everything about everything like who was running what and who was doing it was just cool you know because not a lot of parents are that involved in the sport like track and field that people don't know a lot about for sure you know it's not a money-making sport like football where it brings in a lot and Mm -hmm. stuff so it's kind of like you get you know it's like killian ran for a little while didn't he yeah he did he's a hurdler okay yeah Way back in the day. Now it seems like as much as time has passed. He's freshman year, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. just didn't know. He ran at OCS, hurdled there. Today. My dad was a big fan of his at OCS. Okay. And they talked a lot. And then we kind of got there and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I know you from there. You know my dad. You know, talk, hang out with him. But yeah, I don't think he stayed with it too long. I don't know why, but. Yeah. I mean. It seemed like he uh, was pursuing other avenues in life. Yeah. And hey, He's going balls to the oh, wall, yeah, man. man. He's he's got all kinds of connections and, and a lot of opportunity, and he seems like he's super happy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. 
mean, yeah. it's impressive. I, you know, he quit and did that whole thing. And, you know, I definitely paid attention to that. I was like, you know, I'm going to quit and maybe pursue my dreams now, yeah. too, now that Killian did it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you That's know? cool. Definitely. It's always cool to see that come back around. Yeah. What's up? You got anything else for me? Mm. Let's see. When's your next big trip, Dan? What Man, do? I mean, like, I've, I'm homeless, bro. I'll, I'll go wherever. Just go whenever. wherever? Uh, it's fine. Uh, I need to be hitting you up. Yeah. Letting you know, hey, man, sure. we're going to Colorado. We're going, we're going to California, wherever we're going. Please do. I yeah. love the opportunity. If if I'm available, I would love to, to do it. Um, right now, my plan is to have a, a job that should finish by the time this podcast comes out, honestly. Um, I will go to Baton Rouge, basically, till Christmas. Okay. Uh, hang out with some guys down there. And come back up for Christmas. Uh Hopefully I'm going to be able to leave my truck down there and catch a ride back up to Ruston. And then I'll catch a ride back down to Baton Rouge to go to a wedding for one of my friends on the 27th. Go to Houston to hang out with my brother for the weekend and then go to Dallas for New Year's and nice, stick dude. there. Probably stay in Dallas for a good month or so. And uh, I'd say the homeless life treating you pretty well, it sounds see, like. See where life takes me. Yeah. I mean, I have a little bit of a financial buffer with my house being sold and that yeah. stuff. I didn't like... I didn't necessarily make money off of it, but I basically lived somewhere for free. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. Broke, uh, I had a couple whatever. roommates and they helped me out a lot cool. with that stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's definitely a scary thing going from a steady paycheck. I knew how much I was going to get paid every week yeah. to, to not knowing necessarily when I'm going to get paid. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I, I'm, I was unhappy and I feel like I was, I'm not going it's just reassuring myself, like, those first two weeks, I didn't do anything hardly. And mm -hmm. it's like, my back wasn't against the wall yet. It still isn't. But it's like, I'm working my way back up against yeah. the ropes kind of deal right now. And I, my money flow is slowing down. And so it's like, all right, well, it's time to hustle. Let's yeah. Yeah. Uh, Got to get back out there, gain your confidence, you yeah, know, all those yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, I did a podcast two days ago. I mean. Do one today. Hopefully do one Sunday. I'm going to be here for a couple of days next week, so I'm about to hit up some more people tomorrow. And you're shooting some video and stuff like that, yeah, so yeah, getting out there. Yeah, yeah, finish up a video project and hopefully get paid for that and finish editing another one. So, right on, man. Yeah, so I just got to keep doing that, keep reaching out. I mean. Asking for the sale. Yeah, well, it's, it's something like, you can't ever, like, you know, put yourself forget. out there thing, like. Yeah. Literally. Practicing that humility. Man, in the last like three or four months, I've just been like going to all these events and I, and a single guy by myself and just reaching my hand out. Hey, I'm Jansen. How are you doing? You know, and then asking them about themselves mostly. You know, that's yeah. the best way to win, win a friend is to let them talk about them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. I know something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You're a Trump guy. Trump guy. Big Trump guy. Not a big Trump guy. Come oh, on. You sat outside of the Civic Center. I went to it, man. <laughs> With your women I'm, for Trump. I feel like I'm about, yeah, you like that? <laughs> so many guys were like, I like that button, man. Women for Trump. <laughs> Trump 2020. You know? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I did it for more of the experience yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to, you know, I mean, it's not every day. People said it was a lifetime experience, once in a lifetime experience sure. to have a president come. But for sure. You big Trump guy? No. No, no not no, at all. No. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of hard to deny what he's done for the country economically, but I yeah. think he's an asshole. Yeah. Um, I mean, I understand that's kind of part of it to some degree. If you're a politician, like right. you have to step on some toes to get some places. Um, no, I mean yeah. he's got a, he's got a cool story, you know, with his public relations ability and and reading yeah. those newspapers every day, seeing something about him, knowing all yeah. the reporters by name. And but he kind of used a lot of people to get where he was at. And and if you weren't of value to him, you know, he didn't talk to you. And so mm -hmm. there was like one cool story I heard about Trump was not necessarily cool, but it's just an interesting story is that. This guy was, uh, hang he would see his dad at like a Knicks game and he's like, how's your dad? You know? And, and, uh, he's like, well, my dad passed away, you know, last year or whatever. And then Trump came the next game the next year and he goes, how's your dad going? He's like, well, I he passed away. You know, I told you last year or whatever, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's so Trump to me. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, how you doing? All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He just but, showing face and moving on. Yeah. No, I just went for the experience people are, the people that were there were around me they weren't necessarily like me but i mean i yeah. got to see some some friends that are the business owners in town and stuff like that for but sure 
I mean, other than that, not a diehard Republican necessarily. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, I've lived too many places to see too many different aspects of life. No and, doubt. Uh, no doubt. I think respect is just the main thing. You know, yeah. like, I, I'm different than you, but I respect you. You know, yeah. and I expect that. I mean, to tell you how political I am. I voted for Gary Johnson for president <laughs> because he climbed Mount Everest. Like that was literally my reasoning. Really? Yeah. I was like, I hate Trump. I hate Hillary. I'm just gonna vote yeah. for Gary Johnson. I probably should have done the same, man. <laughs> Shoot. But these days, everybody climbs Everest. They put a freaking Hershey's chocolate yeah, on it, right? God. On they put a Hershey's chocolate on your uh, sleeping bag. Oh really? Yeah. Well, you know, just a joke. But like the Sherpas really take care of you. You know, you seen the yeah, lines? Oh, you yeah, seen people yeah, yeah, dying right. in the in the queues just yeah. to, to climb Mount Everest? And they like, they shut it down for a little while. Did they? On yeah. One side. I mean, and that's just crazy like yeah bags of shit and oxygen yeah. tanks everywhere and it's like yeah. one of the more horrible places in the world I yeah i don't want to go man i mean i would go to base camp or uh, nepal is a great place it's actually if you dig a hole in louisiana and go all the way through the core of the earth you'll get to nepal it's on the other side like laterally wow so yeah it's that's pretty neat i, I thought i had a I, yeah i had a friend from <laughs> nepal and he told me all okay. kinds of facts about nepal there's and, a lot uh, of people from nepal in this uh, area yeah they, it's like they come in because they're friends of friends, and they've they've really grown the area. I mean, they great academics, and they bring mm-hmm. a lot to the uh, to the industry here sure. in Monroe. Both you know, ULM and, and Louisiana Tech as well. There's a lot of guys. Oh, Texas a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. then they're great people. I know you talked about being in a fraternity. You didn't get to experience like culture as much, like reaching out to these international students. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I was friends with a lot of Kenyans on the, on the track team and cross country. I learned some Swahili and stuff yeah. like that. You know, while I was there, I've forgotten it all now. But yeah, you know, I'm. I definitely have had that interest for uh, sure. Meeting like, different people. Joe Rogan has talked about it before. Like it's just like a genuine curiosity about like you and your life. And like, it's kind of where I'm trying to come from. And it is like motivation on this podcast. Part of it is like, I guess I don't want anybody to be able to talk shit about me. Like, Oh, you're not representing this group or that group or whatever. Mm. Uh, but like, I genuinely am seriously curious as to just like, getting different views on life, yeah. you know, and getting different perspectives on life, I guess is really the, the phrase I've been using a lot. It's the only way you uh, learn. Yeah. But so, I get what you're saying. Like, you don't want to just be like, you know, profiled as like, I only have a certain type of people on the right, podcast right, or whatever it right. is. Yeah. It sucks that we live in that day and age, yeah. but, or the opposite where you're so interested in something that's like, Oh, you're just doing this for show. You know, yeah. that would be the worst for somebody yeah. to tell me that, you know, for sure. But, uh, somebody said something or wrote an article about Joe Rogan about how he didn't have enough women on his podcast. Oh, really? And it was just like, that stuck with me. So like now I'm like, they try to cancel everybody, man. That's all it is. Well, and now it's It's like, like, all right, I've had four or five dudes on the podcast in a row. Like I need to, I need to find a woman. So that's kind of my, my goal. You had somebody, I saw you had somebody that was, uh, kept, what are they kept a nursery or something or kept, uh, yeah. Lauren Jennings. She uh, is the head greens house, greenhouse keeper at Louisiana tech. Uh, yeah good friend honestly she's we've kind of known each other on and off for a couple of years now mm-hmm. her husband's super cool had him on the podcast as well i'd love to talk to aaron again he's we'd have a, a lot of very unique conversations <laughs> i believe so yeah we'll have to do this again too man i i feel like uh, there's like s- trips and stories and things that are always happening yeah, and, and, sure. and some crazy stuff well, that's backlogged i and mean at this point i really hope like we let can me adventure together or something like yeah and let's go. make some of these freaking memories we'll come back and talking about a, a trip on the podcast yeah, or something we'll man hopefully killing out okay. next year dude i, I want mean, to there was guys in that area that killed some and we saw it on their instagrams and stuff like day after we left and man, we're like, i'm that's that is like a motivation behind me continuing to like run and work out all the time yeah like, it makes sense yeah i just want i just crave that interaction with the mountain and the wild and just like yeah you know going in with 50 pounds on your back and trying to survive for a couple of days yeah, i mean it's a, it's the nature of a boy right you know yeah i guess so. yeah i guess so well cool man i really enjoyed this thanks for coming on yes sir uh, appreciate it we'll definitely have to do it again we'll have to good we'll to finally meet you man <laughs> yeah you as well for sure um you want to shout out any social medias or anything well, we're here at Governor Cigar. Yeah, we we're are. Friday here at Ellis Cigar. is running for mayor, Monroe. For so, sure. You know, uh, he's been he's pretty pretty cool guy, pretty cool businessman in Monroe. I think he's going against Mayo. So yeah. I, I don't even think we mentioned where we were at, but yeah, this is the I cigar was, shop. I was going to mention it. And, oh, okay, and, yeah. Uh, do but it. yeah, I haven't met Friday. He seems to be uh-huh. a cool guy. Seems to be uh-huh. supporting a lot of things. Yeah, I need to get are, him on here. Yep. That are going on down down in Monroe, and yeah, uh, you can be a member here at the at the shop. They kind of. I'm the youngest member in Monroe, man. Okay. Yeah. 
Wow. Not a lot of people my age smoke cigars, I yeah, guess, you know, yeah. but I, I love the social aspect of it. You get to meet a lot of people and hang out. It's basically like a podcast every day. You're just yeah. not recording it. Yeah, for sure. You know? I imagine you can uh, meet some, some high profile people. Oh, in the definitely some veterans, police officers, yeah. la- lawyers and attorneys, all these, all these people that are, that are really popular in the area too. You get to see what they're like on their off time. You know, they come yeah. here, have a drink and smoke a cigar and kick back. A lot of good guys here, man. There's no, there's no barriers either, you know? it's all types of people but we all come together get along really well there's no tvs here so you're yeah, not, not yeah you're not watching watching the game or nothing you're here for conversation you know so we're using this space for what it's for you know yeah and friday has a podcast right Talk yeah i think him and dj fortenberry they kind of got something going on yeah they put it on facebook or something yeah so. we'll have to link it to him yeah, you can so i can keep up. up with that and you're on social media, I'm sure. Yeah, Jansen Noel photo, uh, J A N S E N N O W E L L photo, or just jansennoel.com is my website if you want to check out some of the work or anything like that. People that like photography out there. For sure. Yeah. Um, Hit him up for your portraits. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, man. It's thanks been awesome. for coming on. Uh, we'll, we'll have to catch up with you down the road. Right on. Sweet. Uh-huh.